Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Vitamin G Gaming Podcast and your host, FC Violent. Well, I mean, that's going on, guys. We're back again. This is, uh, sorry for being late. I apologize. I was dealing with, you know, uppercutting and and headlocking uh, Twitter trolls. You know how it is. Uh, So anyway, welcome back. This is Vitamin G Gaming Podcast. This is episode 22. Uh, where you get your weekly dose of vitamin G, man. This week we'll be talking about Gears 5 Early Impressions. Uh, last week, we, not too many people played it, but I got, uh, I don't know, like 10 hours in, so I'm going to talk about it on my, you know, my point of view. Uh, we'll be talking about Nintendo fixing Joy-Con. They're folding, man. I mean, I guess they're going to pay for it now, right, Zero? And lastly, we'll, oh, there's other thing. We're gonna, we have another rant session. We're bringing that back. Um, it, it feels like we talk about this all the time, but well, we definitely have to talk about it, and it's in reference to the the whole G- GTA Five casino thing, the Naughty Dog and the Crunch controversy. We'll be talking about that, and lastly, what is Microsoft and the Sony partnership? What does it mean? New, uh, I guess, a new article recently talked about uh, Phil Spencer talked about how that relationship uh, kind of coexists, and we're going to discuss what that actually means for us or our thoughts on it. So anyway, let's go to the introduction, man. Uh, I'm gonna introduce our special guest first, Sage Mode Lewis, or now he changed his name to Mob. What's going on, bro? Introduce yourself. What's your preference, and uh, you know what people can find you? Um, well, yeah, my name is Mob. I like the PlayStation, the Switch, kind of now. I barely got my Switch, so I've been enjoying that lately. But yeah, I'm a hardcore pony. Not as much anymore because of like I've been seeing ponies really turn into like kind of Xbox now, defending the censorship. Ooh. Actually, like, it's mad corny. El- el- elaborate corny. on that a little bit. Elaborate on that a little bit. What, what, what do you mean by that? You know, just defending um, Sony on the censorship, and any and basically they're calling anybody a weirdo who doesn't like the censorship. Like <sighs> I said, like I said, I don't like the censorship of like, you know, like lewd stuff, right? Like titties mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And they're calling you a weirdo, you know, a pedo and shit like that. So, yeah, it's pretty stupid. But right before that, when Persona 5 came out, Xbox were calling them pedophiles for liking Persona 5. Oh, and you know true. what I mean? Like, stupid. stupid, yeah, but yeah, that's me. And, and then you can you... find me on Twitter um, at Mob1776. And I don't really do YouTube that much anymore. I just don't enjoy it that much anymore, but I might get back into it. Yeah, that's okay. it. Okay, I appreciate you coming through, man. Sage, oh, it's, it's weird. I'm so used to calling you Sage Mo Lewis, man, for those who don't know. So we're going to go, I'm going to call you Mob, man. So I appreciate you coming through, man. I've been uh you've been an early supporter of the show, so shout out to you. Even though you be, you trolling the Sony side, I think you're starting to see your ways. Even though you're still not a team team green, but we're gonna try to change that. And anyway, let's get to the rest of the panel, man. Dante Crisis, what's going on, bro? Through your introduction, my guy. What uh, games you been playing? Uh, what's up, everybody? Um, I've actually been playing uh, Yakuza Zero, uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood, and. Uh, played Payday 2 on stream today, which was a lot of fun. And uh, you, anybody can find me at Dante Crisis. Just look on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, and you can find me there. Okay, that's what's up, man. Let's go to Lord Butternose, man. Captain X, what you been playing, my dude? Um, I've been playing uh, Madden, of course, and uh, Blue Dragon. I'm, I'm going back. Nice. I need I needed some Mist Walker in my life. I've already went back to Lost Odyssey, and that's on hold. I'm on disc two of that, and I just I just restarted uh, Blue Dragon. Just a race. Yeah, I bounced back and forth from Blue Dragon myself. Heck yeah. Yeah. I haven't played that game in fucking forever. Yeah. You're still playing that shit. <laughs> man, it's still it's still dope. <laughs> all, right, all right, man. I mean, there's literally other games to play, but I, you know, I digress. All right, man. Farrell, what's going on, bro? What you been playing, bro? Oh, 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 oh. one more thing. Oh. Is that? Fire Emblem Three Houses is fucking lit. You need to go get no that spoilers. if you have a Switch. No. no spoilers. No spoilers. It's fucking good. It's it was fucking zero. good. I'm gonna have to talk about that a little bit more. Zero, you got it right because I'm hearing a lot of good things about that game. I might just fucking do a giveaway on it. Oh yeah, I picked it up day one. Oh wow, nice. you feeling generous? Damn man, I mean the game is good. I don't even have a Switch yet, man. You know, but I, I want to get it. But I heard the game is super dope. So, shout out to Iron Lord Podcast on Sundays, man. They, they were talking big things about it. So, anyway, let's uh, let's go on to the rest of the rest of the panel. Let me let me go actually straight to you, Kofi. What's going on, bro? What you been playing? 
What's going on, everybody? Creative underscore Kofi on Twitter. I've been playing a lot, but the game I've spent the most time in is Dragon Quest X, which still really? isn't really in English. And it's an MMO, so it's kind of illegal uh, because I'm married, and MMOs plus marriage can uh, not be great. But I can tell you, hey, Dragon Quest X is great because you can play the sing you can play the story and enjoy it for what it is without really playing with other people. Though I wouldn't say that it's the best experience by yourself. Um, it's still really fun. And um, you have to have a Japanese account to play it, so it's a little bit weird. I usually play all my stuff on just my US account, but uh, it's not like uh, re it's not a IP blocked or anything like that. So um, that's been really fun. Um, another, uh, what else have I been playing, man? Shoot, yeah, that's that's basically it. I I, I did finish um, um, a second run through of Uncharted: Lost Legacy. Nice. Um, I just love that game, and um, the ending is just amazing. There's like a I don't want to go into spoilers, but it's a really good ending, and I enjoyed that. That's what's up. That's pretty man. much it for me. That's what's up, man. Let's 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 go to Reggie, my guy, man. What you been playing, my dude? What is going on, everybody? This is uh, Reggie, aka Zero, aka Geralt of River. Um, <laughs> it is all um, Fire Emblem all the time. It's in between for Super Mario Maker. Um, but if you are a fan of uh, tactical games with a lot of people management, resource management, uh, just everyday sort of management, this is the game for you. Um, I'm repping the Black Eagles of Princess El Egelhard. Um, I am absolutely having a blast with the game, and I'm only an hour into it. I'm not even into the meat of the story. What's up, man? Around, still run around campus, but absolutely wonderful game. My guy, saltiest game. Shout out to you, bro. You said Z's <laughs> for 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 Fire Emblem, and he's a big Nintendo guy, man. That's blasphemy. Wow. That's, that's some blasphemy shit. Yo, what up, bro? That dude is crazy, man. All right, lastly, bizarre, man. Farrell, what's going on, bro? Do your introduction. Hey, what's up? It's your boy, uh, Farrell. Um. You know, you can find me on Twitter at Feral Bazaar, um, and PSN and Xbox Live at Bazaar Five Thousand. Uh, I got into Madden a little bit this weekend. Got about you nine stay hours. Hey, on Madden. Yeah, you would think there's not hey. any other games, bro. I I switch between. I do a little sports and I do a little RPG. I bounce in between. But, I mean, this one this week the new Madden came out, so I just gave it a shot real quick. Um. Got about nine hours in. Fact. Supposed to be smashing uh nubs tonight. Uh, if anybody wants to watch, yeah, it'll be there. You got to stream, man. Post that. Stream. Yeah, so we'll be, we'll be streaming that. We will be we will be posting that stream. All this trash this man been talking. About. Is it one v one? Oh, I gotta <laughs> see this shit. All right, so you got to yeah, post the stream, that. man. One v one. All right. Well, what team y'all playing, man? Y'all, I mean, I think it's the Cowboys versus the Ravens. Yeah, Go Ravens. Yep. All right, it's gonna. I'm not even a Ravens fan. I got I got money on the boys. You already know how it is. All right, man. Let's do. <laughs> uh, you just mad because you're a dirty Philly Eagle. Anyway, let's, let's, <laughs> let's shout out. Let's shout out the chat, man. Appreciate you guys coming through, and I apologize again for being late. Shout out to Arizona Make Game. What's going on, bro? CPT happens to us all the time, but I'm, this is the first time I've ever been late. I mean, you know, what I mean, I I am mixed, but it is what it is. All right, Omar Shabbat, what's going on, bro? I'm always late. Negative. Usually, that usually that's fucking nubs. But, you know, I'm going to throw him under the bus. Night Music, what's going on, brother? Ray World, Yujiro Hanma. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Saltiest Gaming in the chat. And I think that's pretty much it so far. Oh, CD Mac 5, what's up? What's up, bro? All right, man. Hit that like button. Share this out. Retweet. You know, share this where you share things, man. We're about to get into the topic. Well, we're about to get into gaming news first, and then we'll get into the topics. All right, let's go straight into Japan, man. Reggie, what's going on in Nintendo World, my guy? Hello? Red. Is Reggie not here? Zero. No, oh, he's muted. Yeah. All right, there you go. I don't know if you guys heard, but there's this new game out called Fire Emblem Three Houses. <laughs> it. <laughs> um, that just dropped. I mean, that's one of the biggest news outside of part of the topic we'll get into is Nintendo fixing the Joy-Cons. Mm -hmm. um, also, tomorrow, we will be getting a bit of a Smash Bros. Direct. Um, from Lord Sakurai himself uh, for version 4.0. Should be about, it should re tell us more about the hero from Dragon Quest series, 
um, as well as a lot of people are speculating perhaps we get some additional modes to Smash. Um, a lot of people have been wanting break the targets. Well, that is, uh, but I would like to see home run contests back into it. A good uh, single player mode. <laughs> enjoy the single player mode um and per perhaps a re an actual release date on when hero is supposed to drop um other than that it's been pretty cool i said most of the news has been dominated with uh um that uh astral chain platinum games astral chain i think the trailer for that just dropped even sometime this week uh, i'm actually not sure i I want to say it's September. This year, right? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, it's this year for sure. Right, the chat is not liking your comments, bro. They're talking about boring turn based games. Is it for me? And Wraith World says next. Bro, the disrespect. Dang. Put respect on Fire Emblem's name, name man. The, me, man. The Damn, disrespect, bro. bro. Man, it, people, some yeah, motherfuckers bro. just need to expand their fucking palette of games because yeah, they're man. stuck yeah, in the yeah, same man. Groundhog cool. Day of same old shit, different day. Wraith World plays is nothing but awesome, 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 awesome turn based games. I mean, Ray yeah, Rainbow plays nothing but yeah. Apex Legends. My God, you got to expand your horizons. And you're, you're, you're a PlayStation dude. Playing you, mm. I can never, I can never knock them. Yeah, hey, you know what I noticed? Down. That mentality, that mentality kind of ruined Xbox in terms of like CRPGs <laughs> and stuff. Already, we didn't even that get into the topics. You coming for Xbox? <laughs> that fucking mentality is killing the gaming industry. Just That's don't what I'm saying. That Xbox. mentality though, it ruined Xbox because like. JRPG is so like shit, and not just because it's not in Japan, but like that mentality of only wanting those games of like FPSs, sports games, those casual gaga games, you know what I mean? That's about what to make me get on a soapbox. No, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it ain't even your turn, man. Let's get to finishing these news before we get into to these topics. And I got something for you, Mo. You want, you, how you gonna sabotage the Xbox on my show? What's wrong with you? All right, man. That's it. Reggie, anything else? Last piece of uh, just last piece, you know, according to the, the, our illustrious panel. Really, Xbox is the reason why the gaming industry is the way it is, man. Y'all, y'all messing it up. Oh, here we yeah, go, man. That pain yeah, y'all ain't double team. Y'all, I didn't say that. I don't came from y'all. <laughs> to, to be fair, to be fair, Wraith World is my Xbox guy, but Yajur Hama's a diehard PlayStation dude. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Holla at your boy. All right, Reggie, any other news? I, I take that as a no. All right, let's, 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 let's switch gears, man. All this negative Xbox bass. Captain Xbox knows, man. What's going on in the Xbox world, man? Um, not a whole not, not a whole lot besides them removing Cortana um, in the next Xbox update and redesigning the, uh, the dashboard again for, like, what seems like the 20th time this gen. Hey, man, when they... When they changed that, you saw a lot of people going crazy over it, it copying the PS4 and stuff. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, this, this is the industry of competition. You know, I'm not mad at it. It is faster. I do like it. I'm like, I'm not going to trip on it. I was more disappointed with Cortana getting removed, and I can't talk to her with my headset anymore. But that's a whole nother I thing. I never used that feature. But I mean, I understand. Hey, why didn't good. people? Why didn't people call out the Switch though? Because the UI is pretty pretty similar to the PS4. I mean. Looks yeah, it, it, that's like, my whole point. That's why, like, I'm not even tripping over people crying about this UI. Like, it looks clean and it's quick. You got you complain yeah. that it looks cluttered and it's fucking slow. They fixed those two things, and you're still gonna complain about it. <laughs> I mean, but who's the one complaining though? Let's be kind of true. Real. Let's be real. A lot of people I were mean, in 2013, like when it just came out. A lot of people were complaining about the Xbox UI or AI, whatever it's called. I don't know. All right, fair enough, man. All right, let's 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 go to Dante Crisis, man. What's going on in the PC world, man? Anything new? Uh, two interesting pieces of news actually. So with the with the release of the Doom One, Two, and Three on the Switch, PlayStation Four, and Xbox One, uh, Bethesda decided to slap on a fucking requirement to sign into the Bethesda or to have a Bethesda.net account. And, uh, mm. well, apart, aside from being raked over fucking hot coals and becoming a goddamn laughing stock, they've now fucking, they've recoursed, they've recoiled in fear of the backlash and now decided to make this optional, which is fucking hilarious. So that's the first piece of news. And the other, which is actually very interesting, it's actually related to Doom as well, uh, recent 
uh, a recent filing uh, and rating for Doom 64 by the uh, Peggy system, mm -hmm. which, uh, which, if everybody doesn't know, the Peggy system is obviously the rating system the, over here in Europe. It, yeah. Uh, yeah. Doom 64 recently got a recent fucking Peggy, uh, Peggy rating of 16 for the PC and PlayStation 4. Wow. Which means that we could possibly be seeing Doom 64 on PC and PlayStation 4. It will have escaped the fucking N64 uh, after two fucking decades. Wow. Jeez. And it'll be just in time. Man, I expect... Man, I expect Doom Eternal, Eternal to be probably mature. But do you want to play it, though, is the other question. Uh, yeah, nah, because I, I never got a chance to. We all know the real first-person shooter we're waiting on is Halo, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be quiet. Damn. All right, Max, man. Max. Nah, I just, you, just, you, just <laughs> asked, you just asked for the gaming news. You just I, I tell you that Doom 64 could, we could possibly potentially be coming for it because it got a Peggy rating. Uh, and then you immediately shouts on me when I'm just trying to be nice and respectful. I, I, I see how I, it is, you motherfucker. <laughs> Shout out to Dante, man. What's going on, bro? All right, see, so this, la man, this, man fucking gets it. this man gets it. Fucking Doom 64 kicks ass. Damn fucking right. Shout out to Mr. King in the chat, man. Salute to you, my guy. Actually, I'm going to make him my mind. He's, he's been, he's been low. In, he's been in here, man. Day one supporter as well. All right, so let's go to Kofi. A bunch Kofi. of frauds. <laughs> Kofi, who's going on in, in in the world of Japan, man? Or actually, I guess Western Western America now. Isn't that the new headquarters? What's going on in Sony land? So the first is from the first party, and it's Media Molecule. They apparently are willing to hire individuals who um, want to work for Media Molecule in game creation. Obviously, uh, their newest title game, uh, their newest title Dreams, is not out yet, but has an early access um, uh, version that you can buy right now. People who create their own world in dreams are the forefront applicants for the job so if you're interested in joining the gaming industry obviously if you got nothing to lose i think this is a great opportunity but the the one catch is that you have to create something in dreams um, in order to be a applicant for uh, the game um as you probably have heard i've uh, did a little bit of work with fc talking about dreams yes, i love media molecule uh so hey man if you want to get an in and you're really Maybe you already have a world in dreams. Go for it. Seriously. Uh, moving on to second party, coming from Grasshopper Manufacturer, uh, the creator of No More Heroes from the Wii has announced a release date for the PS4 version of the original uh, game, No More Heroes. Uh, that will be coming out uh, on PlayStation 4. I'm almost... I, I don't, this is not a confirmation because right now there's no release date in the US for it, but it will be out later this year in Japan. But I can almost guarantee it's going to be localized at some point, probably early next year. Is, is, it, well, and, is it coming in for Xbox? No. Right now, only PlayStation. What about the Switch? Yeah. Not for the Switch either. Wow. But the, the good yeah. news is that with No More Heroes 3, I'm hoping that Switch owners would get some sort of remaster of the original i would imagine what i mean yeah man that makes sense i mean of course you're not gonna put it on the xbox no one buys that shit on xbox Oof. switch it makes sense shots fired <laughs> Um, right. um, the next comes out also of the East uh, from uh, Sega and the creators of Shin Sakura Wars. As you guys know, uh, there was a, so there was a live stream last Wednesday, right after our last podcast, and they announced that December twelfth is the official release date for Shin Sakura Wars. We still don't have an official date for the U.S., but it is confirmed that it will be out uh, spring twenty twenty in the U.S. Um, it was interesting to see people's reactions because we were just talking about turn-based versus non-turn-based um, for RPGs of Shin Sakura Wars. The entire series has been turn-based, and this game showed off gameplay. I don't know if you have access to a, a trailer or anything, uh, FC, yeah, but I'm, I'm it's, the, it's the first real-time combat Sakura Wars game. Um, it is cool-looking to me. I'm going to be buying it in December, and maybe when we get to that point, I'll, I'll give my thoughts because it'll be out a few months earlier in Japan, but... Um, some people are not excited about it not being turn-based as, you know, uh, series fans. So definitely. I mean, I mean, according to our chat, they don't, they don't care too much for turn-based. So maybe, maybe this is a good so thing. So maybe this is, yeah, exactly what they were looking for. I mean, for. I Was personally like action RPGs a lot better because it's just faster for me. I don't know why, but like turn-based RPGs are, um, they're okay. Yeah. Yeah. We could definitely have a conversation about that. Um, that's it for me, though. Uh, I agree. Between action versus turn-based? 
Yeah, yeah. Should, I agree. actually, let's, let's make that the. You know, I'll wait for that. But yeah, because there's a lot. There's a lot of hating going on some turn base for some reason, which I don't. Could part do that in the end. Yeah. All right. And I think who else didn't go? Oh, Pharaoh, man. What's going on in the uh, the financial world of gaming? Any other news you got before we get into these topics? Uh, nothing too major. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's been finance has been pretty quiet. You know, the consoles are kind of dying off. Uh, other than uh, we're already going to talk about the um. Microsoft and Sony uh, partnership, mm-hmm. right? That's a topic for today. So no, nothing. Really, PlayStation pre-orders went live in Sweden for uh, one thousand fifty dollars, but it's most likely just a holder. So don't panic. PlayStation Five probably won't be a thousand dollars, but uh, that's about it. Yeah, shout out to Omar. He said that, that I'm sold on this game. It should look though. That does look dope. You said it feels like a Gundam game doing it right. My guy, Omar. Yeah, man, that game look <laughs> tight. Be playing does, that. It does. Soon as it come out. Code Wars. All right, man. Uh, all right, when does that game come out? Actually, yeah. all right, go ahead. Oh my bad. No, no, go ahead. I said, when does that game come out? Actually, that like so them type game. The U.S. is unconfirmed, but it says spring 2020, like for a specific date. And then in Japan, it's December 12th. What's up, oh, man? Okay. All right, let's let's get let's get into the actual topics, man. Now, Nubs or anyone else in the panel, have you guys tried out the Gears Five Tech Test? No, obviously, just, uh, obviously, no. I haven't, but I've obviously seen you play it a lot, so I can get you a good idea. All right, fair enough. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna highlight my own channel by watching my own trailer on it. That's that's how we do, man. All right, so Nubla, no, you've tried it last weekend, and I don't think you've got a chance to to play it this weekend. But I'm gonna talk up a little bit about what 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 I view on it. Um, so Gears Five Tech Test. Firstly. It's it's it looks it looks good. Um, the, it's smooth. It's sixty frames, and I don't know, man. I I didn't really like Gears Four too much. I mean, everyone knows that who follows me. Uh, Gears Four is all right, but just judging it from this multiplayer, I'm actually pretty excited for what Gears Gears Five uh, will be. So much. This so should I think, also. I think it's sorry, it's best say we should go ahead. I was about to say, we should add the caveat that the footage you are seeing currently is PC. Yes. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Fair enough. This is PC gameplay. I tried, uh, Don't I tried no fake both. News. <laughs> fair enough. I tried both controllers, uh, console, or I did the keyboard mouse first, um, just to see how that feels. Uh, the, the movement, the, it feels a little weird compared to a controller because you have to do a lot of uh, what they call the wall bouncing. It's, it's kind of difficult trying to navigate or, or, or connect the wall bouncing Con, uh well on the controller it's a lot easier to do because it's i guess it's it's easier to be omnidirectional uh with, with the controller so that's the difference but the the aiming of, of course is is easier on the on the on the mouse but this game is not really so much on aiming because it's so close quarter combat especially in versus that the controller you could do quite well in it honestly so i wouldn't i, I wouldn't be against playing against against the, against the computer but my my early impressions on it if you guys haven't tried the the beta or you guys are kind of worried about it. This Gears is going to be good, man. Just from the verses alone, I'm getting Gears of War 2 vibes. I don't know if you guys played Gears of War 2 multiplayer. That shit was like the shit back in the day in the 360 era. It was 360, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm getting it day one. If you guys follow my stream, you, you, you know you know how I got in like maybe 10 hours total in this game. So, definitely check it out. This is the stream that I had the other day. And we'll be doing more streams like this. And hopefully... Going against other people. Shout out to Night Music in the chat. We actually uh, partnered up with his crew, and uh, eventually we're gonna play against them. Um, seems like I'm the only guy who plays multiplayer, except for Dante here, because you know Sony dudes don't play multiplayer. But anyway, enough Dang. of that. Let's <laughs> let's get into the let's get into the other topic. <laughs> you know it's true, man. I'm like, yo, what what games y'all want us to stream? I put VGP stream, hey, and it's just me. To be, and I'm like. Go ahead. Think, hey, you get you play think, a game that I can you got you play a game that I can I can play. I'll be all over that shit with you if I got time. All right, fair enough, man. I know I know the hours are different. I think the best time for you is probably what in the weekends in the afternoon because I know we were talking in that chat. Fuck no, fuck no. Now I live stream my fucking recording sessions. Oh, uh, okay. I'm just trying to figure out what the best time because I know you were five hours ahead. But anyway, let me let's go on to the next topic, and that topic is okay, real quick. I was from the, uh, just what? watching. I watched your stream. Yeah. Um, 
how does it feel the the cover mechanic um i don't know if, if you played the division division had a real mm-hmm. good movement from cover to cover um mm-hmm. it felt for it it felt like you were really making these like vaulting and hiding is yeah. gears up to par is it is it good is it okay I mean, think the, the grandfather who perfected the cover system is gears is it not i mean uncharted would have uncharted without gears of war and i'm sure that's or division got a lot of stuff from gears gears is the grandfather oh, division they, for they, sure they have this shit perfected the, the cover mechanic you could go left right you could jump over and you could connect the thing is the difference is the is the movement you could connect the, the wall bounces you know, just to dodge enemies, you go into cover, slide out, and then try to get behind them. Like, there's a lot of, um, it's tactical in that way. It's not simply just go behind cover, pop, pop, go behind cover, like uh, Division. It's go behind cover, go against the wall, bounce off that wall to get to another wall. You're doing a zigzag motion using the wall, what they call a wall bounce, to get um, closer to the enemy to, you know, to blow them up, basically. So, there's a lot of things like that, and you could grab people. Um, from cover, if they're trying to, like, if you guys do, doing a shotgun, like, duck dance, like, oh, shot, duck, shot, duck, you could grab them over the cover and then bring them to you and shoot them. Or you could jump over and kick them in the face and then blow them up that way. So it's, like, multiple ways to get people. So it's it's dope, man. I, I highly ju- suggest you guys try it out, man. Shout out to the Movement felt so freaking it's, good. It's clean, it, it, man. Like, you it's could, you clean could, as hell. Clean. Even in that video you played back, it did look pretty smooth. It's going it's smooth cover, and so. clean, man. I'm definitely day one with it, man. I'm hoping... It feels like Gears of War 2, which I played a lot of multiplayer. Now, I don't know if you guys have played it, but... Facts. It yeah, does. That's, that's, that, that's, that's exactly what it reminded me of. That's the vibe it gets. And if it gets that vibe, that means it's going to be a, a high-scoring game, man. Gears 2 scored, what, a 90? Was it a 90-something? I believe so. It might be the I highest think. Gears. So oh, that's, awesome. a good, that's, that's a good omen, so... Might want to go back and predict, predict, predictions. 88 to a 90. I got, I, I got it. 55. I got it sitting at a solid. Whoa. Yo, my, yo, yo. <laughs> ejecto seat, cuz. Did you, you just say 55? <laughs> ejecto <laughs> seat, out, around, bro. Nah, <laughs> hell nah. Hell nah. Nah, this is for you, bro. This what you, what you mean? I mean? This man said 55. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Shut that shit up. Ejecto seat. Still got seat. Yeah, Still I, got one. I, I gotta put a guest timeout for you, bro. A, a minute for saying the dumbest shit oh, out your mouth. I just fuck it around. Nah, it's all good, man. Dang. It's it's usually one of those those series where you can't really talk too much shit about gears, but I know you guys try, but you really can't. It's one of the one of those pillars. Nah, you can't. It's a good game. I'm uh, uh, it's a good game. Fact, so, uh, just a uh, factual update. Just a factual update. Uh, gears of War is actually the first is actually the highest rated. Is it? Um, what, what did Gears Two score? Uh, get okay. So if we're talking, uh, I'm going off of Metacritic case, so mm-hmm. grain of salt, everybody. But Gears of War got a 94 with critics, a 8.3 with users. Um, Gears, uh, sorry, 94 with critics. Gears of War 2 got a Holy 93 shit. with critics and only a 7.8 uh, with users. Uh, Gears of War God, 3 got a 91. Great. Gears of War 3 got a 91 with critics, but a 7.9 with gamers so that actually so gears 3 actually scored higher with users than it did than gears 2 uh no one can see it but still i'm gonna fucking add it uh no, gears judgment. judgment got a 79 by critics uh 5.6 by users and gears 4 got an 84 uh an 84 Ouch. by uh by critics and a 6.8 by users but i'm i'm looking at that user score and i'm thinking get Gears 4 is definitely not a 6.8. Uh, 6. If we're going to digit that, I'd say it's at least a 7.5. You also got to realize during that era, man, that, that multiplayer Xbox is still good. and Microsoft was getting shit on everything, and then the single player, half. It, it took a while to get to the good stuff. And I'm telling you, 84, if anybody's saying it's a score 84, bro, like, I don't know. We could, we could put money on that. I think it's going to score definitely no lower than 88. Just for multiplayer. If, if multiplayer has the same quality as a single player, then easily an 88. Easily. But I haven't tried but the, yeah, the, the single player yet, so. But yeah, the hey, highest. Man, yeah, highest I agree rate. with you. Shout out to Lakers. I Rams feel like what's going to make the Metacritic go lower is going to be the campaign. I feel like that's going to. Yeah, but we don't know like, about the campaign, man. It's, 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 it's supposed, to, it's yeah. supposed to bring a lot of new elements, not a lot of new open world. And then apparently, Rod Ferguson didn't want to show it because they wanted to uh, spoil it, which is a different way to, I guess, where, how, where uh, I guess the God of War developers were like, oh, we're going to show this because it's new and we want to bring this to you and get you hyped. But the coalition they were like yeah. nah we're gonna hold it back because we don't want nothing spoiled so there's two ways of going Did about it watch, 
I mean, hopefully it comes out, you know, you then watch, it works out. Um, so. Did you watch uh, 2016 E3 when that was going on? 2016? For gear? Oh, wait, yeah, did you watch that E3? Nah, yeah. I can't really remember it too much. Well, real quick, shout out to Lakers Rand. Said the shotgun and kind of feels like older gears. Exactly. It does feel like older gears, and that's why it's good. And Jay says, yeah, it's the two piece again. Gear. The two piece is back. It's not as it's not as good exactly. as it was in, in Gears One, but the two piece is back in there. Exactly. See, see, Nub, Nubs is hype, and I'm not even a Gears guy, and I'm looking forward to it. So there you go. And Jero Hama said, eighty five guaranteed. You are a hater, sir. Anyway, so let's let's move on. That was supposed to be nah, a quick topic. Nah, that's a good the, score, man. That's a good I'm score. Not, it's an 84. Yeah, gears 4 was 84, and I was a half-ass Gears 4. In my, I mean, Gears, in my opinion. The multiplayer by itself lie. is already better. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to agree. I'm. I mean, with how with obviously the the downtrend of the Gears games, and then obviously the uptick with four from Judgment to four. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I didn't even look into how well Gears Ultimate Edition did with Metacritic, um, but I'm I'm gonna have to agree. I'm gonna say, uh, eighty. I'm gonna say eighty five for the for the game. Eighty five. Yeah, I gotta one I gotta point agree increase. Dante because right. think about it. Like let's this. let's get everybody's not, scores. Hold on, new, right? let's get everybody's score. Kofi, you wanna do this shit again? I think I was the closest who got the E three prediction. So I said eighty eight, no lower than eighty eight. Dante, you're saying eighty five. Yeah, uh, nubs. What you're saying? Early impressions. I'm gonna say 91, bro. I'm gonna say 91. That's fucking high, but all right, 91. All right, track it. 91. Okay, let's go. Let's go, Farrell. What, what's your early pre- predictions? Just from watching me play, watching just the, the stuff going on right now. Uh, I think it'll get a solid uh 8.5. 8.5. 85. Oh, 85. All right, you going kind of no faith. My man Omar said eighty and below. You're a fucking hater. This is not days gone. This is not. This is not days gone, my guy. That's disrespectful. Uh, I think I think it'll get a, a, a solid eight point five. I think. Um, I think it'll get a, a a little bit of a hit for it just being an Xbox exclusive. People are kind of down on Xbox exclusives right now, and they're kind of turned off from oh, it's just another Gears game. So I think that'll kind of. Doesn't Bro. feel fresh. Yeah, I see. So, I, see so I, I think the fact that it doesn't have that fresh feel to it, I think it's going to kind of hurt the score no, a little no, bit. Man. Yeah, Uncharted, will, 4, the thing, Uncharted 4 scored 90, and was it the best Uncharted? Hell no. So I will turn around and say this. The things you've also got to take into account is if we talk, are we talking, because there's going to be a vast fucking difference between the gamer score, uh, the, the gamer's the critics, reviews, critics, uh, critics. and the critics. Because, I mean, I'll tell you something. If we're going to talk, if we're talking... Uh, if we're talking user review score, I'm guaranteeing you it's going to be a, it's going to be in the sevens. It's not going to be in the eights. I don't really care for the user reviews. There's a lot of trolls on each side. So, whoa, FC, you just got a lot deeper voice. The hell, voice you, changing? You, you you invoking your fucking inner Barry White? Oh no, hold on, let me change it. The fuck? <laughs> I have my, I have Dude, my I have radio thought... nighttime voice, man. It got a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought I thought you. I was wondering. I'm like, who the hell is that talking? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no my, my bad. I'm like, no. I'm not. I'm I'm not that high, bro. Like, who the no, hell is that voice talking? Me, man. I, I got the uh, what's that? Uh, what's the old school uh, radio station that we that play out here? Silence. Was it Silence Storm? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Silence Storm. Salty as Satan. Is that you? Storm. That's your quiet storm. Quiet storm. You know what I mean? before you were talking to FC. Now you're talking to Violent. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my ego, man. That's what it is. Violence in the building. It's like, nah. All right, so let's get the rest. Cole, it's still lined up, bro. It's still doing Bring it back up. Yeah, yeah, bring it back up. Motherfucker. Is, is it still doing it? Like, what the fuck is wrong with this thing? Can you hear me? <laughs> Dude, I'm talking, I'm talking to the ghost of Byron White. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> we can hear you. It's just it's deep. <laughs> well, I don't know why it's deep. I didn't change anything. The fuck? Like, like you, you, you somehow in the space of a few seconds got even blacker. <laughs> like your voice just got that damn deep. Listen, welcome, w- w- welcome to radio late night ninety five point seven. <laughs> Fucking Michael Clark Duncan, that set. There you are. <laughs> Quiet so. So anyway, in puberty again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I mean, look, you guys are getting the special. I don't know what's going on with Mike. Just listen and listen to the soothe 
playback of the new Violent G, Vitamin G Gaming Radio. Oh, and your host, of <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta, I'm muting myself, otherwise I'm going to join Go. Kofi in the fucking afterlife. I'm going to let y'all oh talk. Oh my god! Man. Hey, so, so oh Reggie, god. what's what's your score, man? Reggie and Kofi, y'all two is next. I'm going to give it 86. 86? All right, one more, one more point. Roger that. Hey, why Kofi, do you sound like that, FC? It's the, I don't the voice meter is fucking up, man. I don't know. You are just gonna just have to like you know. <laughs> He's being possessed woman. by the ghost keep, of Michael. Keep your woman hey, back. Quit, quit out, quit out the call and come back, said, bro. Keep your Actually, woman back. Yeah, keep keep your woman back. I don't want no panties dropping. So hold on, I'll be right back. But right. you sound like a sword cutter, bro. <laughs> hey, so so Mark, did you quit? All right, is that better? Yeah, okay. Can y'all hear me? The fuck. Going on, Indy. Mm. Now I can't hear anybody. What the fuck? Yo. Oh, yeah, man. If it gets, uh, Sorry. All right, there we go. There we go. Can no, you guys no, hear no, my going, voice going. My, my bad. No, no. You still ch channeling Barry White. Hello. Hey. I mean, it's, yeah, you still sound like a deeper, serial killer, bro. But it's not that bad. <laughs> it no, it's bad. Like, no, it is bad. <laughs> you sound like a serial killer, bro. Like, you got, like, a bunch of kids in your basement or something. Hey, man, oh, fuck man, like, <laughs> yo, no, no, he, he, sounds, he sounds like somebody that's protecting their voice for a, <laughs> to be anonymous. Exactly. One of the fucking date exactly. live shows. <laughs> Excuse me, pissed off, man. You know, you? this is a hey, hey, this, 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 this won't be a VGP if there wasn't one fuck up. Seriously. Facts. Listen, I, I apologize. Man. Just you know, like I said, just hold you women back. It is what it is. Uh, All right. Well, well while you, saw, talk while you, uh, I, I didn't no, get the score gonna, for the last two. Reggie, uh, uh, Reggie, you said eighty-five. Uh, Kofi, what's your score? Eighty-seven. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Let's get to, let's get the topic. I'm gonna try to fix my mic while y'all talk about the next one. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo fixing Joy-Con. Reggie, first, uh, describe what's going on, and then. Uh, definitely take your have your take. I'm gonna try to fix my mic. I'm gonna put up the the article now. So, uh, if you didn't catch it from last week and the week before, um, there's always been this sort of running undercurrent of an issue with the Nintendo Joy Cons, essentially known as Joy Con drift. Understand? Um, basically, for example, my my Switch suffers from it. So, if I'm playing a game and I go up, it's on my left Joy Con, and I just run up and then stop to keep going up. The controller, for some reason, tends to uh, just move in whatever direction it's left in without even being prompted. Phantom um, people are saying it's due to the inputs um, and how they're constructed, because people have taken apart the Joy-Cons um, and seen that it's just worn, so it's not really that good. Uh, it's been a bit of a design flaw, honestly, um, which is unacceptable for controllers that cost about eighty dollars. Um, a backlash on it. They released one statement, which really didn't say anything, um, which makes sense. It's the first time the company is addressing it. They're trying not to be liable for it, um, and of course, a class action lawsuit came up because of it. Uh, well, earlier this week, uh, Nintendo finally said something worth some substance and has instructed all of their customer service reps to accept and fix all Joy-Con controllers for free. Um, now, of course, this probably means you have to send it in. Um, not really sure what the time is or when you're going to get it back. Um, and what could potentially happen is if this class action lawsuit still goes through, you might waive your right to the lawsuit if you fix your controller for free. Now, of course, that's back and forth because if you got co your controller fixed, what are you lawsuit for? But I'm neither, you know, I'm not a lawyer or part of that sort of thing, so I'm not going to really get into it. Um, so it looks like there's being a fix for the Joy-Con, but it's still not great in the sense that I've got to strip it off. So if you don't have any other controllers, you might be Joy-Con list for a while, which means it'll be probably tough to do in handheld mode. Um, which is the large, which is how the largest player base plays the Switch anyway. 
So it's good. It's not great that it's happened, uh, but it's good that they're fixing it for free. Fair enough, man. Let me go to Mo, Ma, Ma man. You, you're a new Switch owner. What's your take on this? Is my voice still sound? You're getting deeper. You're getting deeper. Yeah, I still, swear to oh, right, getting you're getting deeper. deeper. Yeah. Hell, man. But um, I love my Switch. I definitely like my Switch. Zelda, uh, it plays great. Graphics look great or whatever. But the Joy-Cons... They're fine. Um, earlier, I was playing with the Switch. I left it in the, the couch. My mom sat on my Switch by accident, and I was going crazy, man. I thought, I was like, well, there go my Joy-Cons, you know, with the Joy-Con drift and everything. But um, they still work fine. I think it's probably exaggerated, but I've only had my Switch for about a week now, close to two weeks probably. So that's probably why. Um, let's see, in a few months, I'll probably fuck up. But if they do, I'll just never play handheld again. I'll just play with a Pro Controller for the rest of my life. I'm fine with that either way. All right, man. Uh, anyone else who has a Switch? Uh, Nubs, what's your take on this? Um, I've had to replace my Joy-Cons already. So um, I'm a little perturbed about that, that I just went and bought some new ones. I still have the old fucked up set, but I just bought some new ones already. You so. can't send those the... off. Hey, Lord, when you say the fuck up set, are you talking about just the left Joy-Con? That's it? Well, yeah, as far as the drift, but the other one, like I had, I had a multitude of shows. I had, I had drift, and then um, the actual, the fucking bracket things that hold it on to the switch in handheld modes, like they would just slide off. Like somebody put the fucking wrist strap on backwards and like broke those. So, hey, um, Reggie, yeah, when they said when talked about made, fixing your switch. Game. Do you got to send in your whole Switch or just the Joy-Cons? Or the, or just the, the Joy-Cons. Just Joy-Con. the Joy-Con. Yeah. What you, if it's just I've, one Joy-Con? Yeah, it's the left one. If you specific, because I've done this and I'm, I just need to, I just need to print off the, uh, uh, the free shipping th- uh, thing they sent me uh, because I'm currently going through that. I just need to print that off. If you type, if you go to the customer service where it says for repairs and stuff, you can just select um, accessory. And say it's the Joy-Con, just type in Joy-Con Drift, and they will say, just send us the Joy-Con uh, with this with this slip, and we will repair it. Do you only, could you only send in one Joy-Con, like the left Joy-Con? That you it, the yes, that they, they, even if you, yeah, well, they will only ask for the left one, because the primary, the biggest contributor of, drift, of Joy-Con Drift has been the left one, it is the motion, that's the one that gives the phantom inputs. All right. All right, and man. FC has gone quiet, so um, yeah. I, I think he's still trying to fucking set his thing up. So who else here has got a Switch who wants to comment on this, aside from myself? Uh, can you guys hear me? I don't know. I don't know how to fix this fucking thing. It, the only way to fix it is to restart <laughs> this thing. But it is, I mean, it ain't, yeah. it ain't, a, it ain't a VGP show if, I, if something ain't going wrong. Yajiro Hama says, have, has anybody noticed for every generation... Nintendo being using cheap materials built for their products and hardware. What, why do you think that is, Mob? I mean, um, actually, I think it's it's just a, a company thing, right? You think about Sony and uh, Xbox. Every time they make a console, they usually take a loss, right? They take a big loss during the PS3. They take a loss on the PS4, but not as much. Nintendo, when they come out with a new console, they, they never take a loss. It's always profitable when it comes out. I mean, the Wii U came out, I think it was still profitable. It was like 350 right, when that thing came out. Um, the PS4 came out at 400. It wasn't profitable. The Xbox One came out at 500. It wasn't profitable. But Nintendo's consoles, they always come out profitable. Even when they just come out, the Wii was profitable. I mean, that shit, the graphics were like garbage. You know, they were basically a GameCube with motion. <laughs> but it was profitable. The GameCube was profitable. Uh, I think the SNES was profitable too, and the N64 was profitable. So it's just that Nintendo that, likes to cheapen. Like to cheap ever- out. Is there ever going to be a knock on Nintendo for that? Because, like, I mean, there's two ways of seeing it. One, you can see it on the business side. Like, hey, Nintendo is like, you want our prop? I know people are going to buy our stuff. We're going to keep the quality high. Or not quality, but right. keep our, our, our margins high. Decent. Yeah. yeah. Or or well, should should they be more lambasted or, or targeted more for, like, hey, Nintendo, like, what the fuck? Uh, FC, I, I think love... we're already seeing that. I mean, right now. But this is yeah. after after they were, like, literally lit their fire. I mean, this this right here shows... Um, I guess if you if, if the fans and consumers are like fed up with something and you sue them or, or make them do something, this is this is a good example of how we change things. Had no I mean, one said anything, had no if not a lot like a group of lawsuit 
uh, as happened, this still still been going on. You think Nintendo would have would have done it for just you know as, as you know a change of heart? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not defending that. I'm not making that point. I'm just saying that. I mean, because you you say that they've always had problems. I just I'd like to. I'd like an example because I mean, there's there's been hardware issues like as far as like mm -hmm. things that could be improved like uh the game like with the n64 the obvious problem with that is they stuck with cartridges yep. um so that was a design fault with the with the console but i mean as far as any major um like hardware malfunctions like joy con drift I, I, off the top of my head i can't think of one uh you got the gamecube any major hardware problems with that, like Joy-Con Drift, I, I can't think of. Again, the only hardware problem with that thing was the fact that they went with the fucking miniature discs. Um, but aside from that, it was a very powerful <coughs> console when it came out. Regardless, like it was, what was it was more powerful than the fucking PlayStation Two. Um, uh, the Wii, uh, same same deal. It hard. Uh, it was just hardware kickbacks as far as the fucking nunch uh, the. Um, uh, the the Wiimotes go because they eventually bought out the Wiimote Plus, but there was n I can't remember any big giant hardware uh, problems like Joy-Con drift. Uh, same with the same with the uh, the Wii U. I can't think of anything major uh, like this happening with that, aside from the big giant fuck off annoying Wii U tablet. Mm. Um, I would say this is the biggest fucking hardware problem that they've had. That could have been avoidable with more R and D time. So you're saying this is a, a cause of them rushing this out after the failure of the Wii U? I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a rush, but I would say it's definitely something that should have it. Ha it needed more time in the oven, like more, more, um, more rigorous fucking testing, so to speak. Fair but I, like I say, as far as as far as like Joy-Con drift, like something of this magnitude that could fuck up so much i mm. can't think of any of that anything like that happening with their previous consoles where this is the biggest major um hardware malfunction i can think of that nintendo's ever had everything else has just been uh either bad design uh like from a standpoint where there was an improved version brought out later on yeah. or just baffling design choice yeah, I agree. This could be the biggest fuck, especially yeah. with the Switch Lite. I mean, if the Switch Lite is a major Joy-Con drift problem, that would be uh, pretty bad. But, you know, it's, you're stuck with Joy-Con drift forever if you have a, a Switch Lite. Which is the reason why I turned around and said I will not be getting a Joy-Con fuck. This is why I would not be getting a Switch Lite. I just want to make yeah, sure that the Switch I... is good, man. Go, go ahead, Reggie. Go ahead. I was going to say, what, what's your take on this? <laughs> I'm just like I I actually kind of agree with Dante and Mob when it comes to the sense of uh there really hasn't been a huge from a hardware perspective because most of the time that hardware uh, like Mob said it's it it was made to be profitable and so it just kind of works it doesn't work to the expectations that we have so the GameCube would come nowhere near what the PS3 or 360 was doing um but tiny little square box of a case um the, the switch definitely is something that feels a li felt a little rushed out um the only one i can really think also felt rushed was the wii u um only because clearly the wii u was what the switch always was supposed to be um but even the docking station and i think is a perfect example of this it's the most flimsiest cheapest piece of plastic you can find yeah, because they didn't make money on the dock it's just a small piece of components that connect it to your TV. Um, so it's not surprising that people were getting these issues where it was starting to warp or it wouldn't fit it or it was scratching their uh, their switch. It's not yeah, true. I remember that. It's not okay. hey, um, um, Reggie, there wasn't I remember just that. that the, when the switch test came out, everybody talked about the scratching thing. When yeah. I got my switch, I learned, before, before I even docked it, I put a sock over the thing so I wouldn't scratch my screen. I just put a yeah. little sock over it and the Switch screen looks yeah. fine. Now, saying, there was another one knock on there because they should have anticipated that from the jump. And putting this thing in and out, if, if your whole selling point is I can pick it up, put it back in on the go, then you need to make sure every time I put it in and take it out, it does not scratch my screen. Get a sock yeah. or a cloth. 
um, in order to be able to do that. That should be day one. Um, but it's because th they made that thing on the cheap. Right? That's the most cheapest thing I've ever seen. And now it's probably only going to get cheaper since they've seen that handheld mode is the key mode for the Switch. Hmm. I, I would like to add on to that. There was another issue with the Switch, but it wasn't. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a, this is in Nintendo's ballpark of fault, but there was the issue of third-party docks bricking switches as well. What? Yeah, I didn't hear. About I remember. That. That I actually remember that. I actually remember this being brought up. Uh, yeah. Give me a sec while I research, research this up. No, he was right. And again, yeah, I mean, it's not it's not specifically fair to blame Nintendo for those third-party docks. But I mean, oh no, if, I'm not. If, I'm not saying the, that. I know, I know, I know. You're not saying that, but if the dot worked fine and it, you know you didn't get your screen, your screen scratched, they, those, those third party dots would have never really been popular. You know what I mean? Exactly. I don't know. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. They didn't. They also yeah. have a thing where like they didn't want you to use non Nintendo licensed like decals on your shit too. They're like, yeah, you can't put any skins on it except for like official Nintendo skins. Oh like, yeah, I remember this when the Switch just came out. Um, people are putting D brand skins over because companies they were making skins for the Switch, right? And the okay. Switch was just getting they were becoming ugly, they were all scratched up and everything. So they stopped selling the skins. Okay, right. No, I can't actually lay this at the feet of fucking Nintendo, actually. This can be laid at the feet of Nintendo. I'm looking up I've just found the article. Uh when Nintendo pushed the five point zero point zero firmware update live for the Switch recently, it had an unintended uh, or unwelcome side effect for some users. The newest update actually uh, did not play nice with third-party docks and actually bricked a lot of them. So it was actually a firmware update that ended up bricking switches in third-party docks. So Damn yeah, shame. Crazy. Yeah, which like the, like I'm I'm looking at a picture. Let me just I'm gonna just post this in the chat for people to see, like. Uh, you guys can check that out as well. I'm looking at that dock and I'm thinking, you know what? I mean, if there was if there was obviously back support for it, because I can't see behind it, but I wouldn't. I would like that kind of dock for my fucking for my switch, because then that eliminates a that eliminates the fucking problem with it scratching the front. But also, it just looks. I'm not gonna lie. I I like my switch, but that dock is a that dock is a flimsy piece of fucking plastic. But hey, it's, not, it's not even that. Think about the price. I mean, if the Switch was the Switch dock was like just thirty bucks, I mean, people would be okay with it. But that thing's like eighty dollars, right? It's it's yeah. crazy. It's insane. It's eighty dollars for a much. hunk of a hunk of HDMI plastic. to fucking Type C plastic. Like it's like terrible. It's like a, it's, but it's like it's like eighty bucks for HDMI cable. That's it's what it is. What? Eighty bucks for HDMI don't... cable, basically. Oh, like I I don't know. Looking at this, if it was intended for the firmware to 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 do this but nintendo had to have known that there was already a third part by fucking update five uh, by firmware five they had to have known that there was a aftermarket's fuck it, there was a p aftermarket's part for docks and they had to have known this so i'm not saying it was malicious that they did this to to eliminate fucking third party docks so they get all the money for docks but that's that's some that's some that's some shady shit. I mean, it was it was definitely um accidental because no no company wants bad PR, right? They wouldn't want people saying, "Don't buy our dock." I mean, don't buy third party docks. Don't buy anything for the switch. You know what I mean? They wouldn't want that. So yeah, apparently some won't break it. Shout out to J Slayer J sixty six said, "Don't forget the switch is rat, uh, which is warping due to the docks too." So seems like. I mean, I feel like Nintendo gets a lot of passes, and oftentimes we do have to uh, show that one they are making uh, amends to it, but at the same time they're not they're not you know faultless either. So enough oh, of that. This, though, noticed, this to me, yo, what I've noticed is that um when you leave the switch in the dark for just like an hour or two, it gets really fucking hot, dude. Like really hot when you take out the switch. I've the not dark. noticed that. Yeah, yeah I, I actually that. haven't either. No, now we're gonna move on from the switch, man. Put no, 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 no. Before we do, before we do, <laughs> like, let me just let me just bring it back and get because obviously I'm the only other switch user here, so I so I'm just gonna comment on the actual fucking topic. Um, as far as I'm glad they're finally fucking addressing, and because the thing is, you forgot to mention they are refunding people yes. who paid for Joy-Con 
uh, repairs. They are refunding everybody who did who paid for it, and every other fucking repair from now on for the Joy-Con drift or the Phantom input, as I like to call it, uh, will be free from now on. This to me is them trying to avoid the class the class action lawsuit. I wouldn't say this is trying to uh, make people so they can't get uh, so people can't join in the lawsuit. I think this is specifically Nintendo trying to say, no, we are fixing the issue. We are correcting our fault. There is no need for a lawsuit. True. I mean, like, if you could stop the bleeding before yeah. it starts, then, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, stop the stop this little fucking pinprick before it becomes a fuck up, full on hemorrhage. And I mean, let's be honest, most, um, thing, I think they, they knew that they're going to take a loss in money for repairing all these uh, Joy-Cons, but. Most people, like casuals, won't even know you could return the Joy Cons. You know what I mean? They, they will true, true, they but they will that. make this. They will make this money back on the fucking Switch Lite. They will make this money back hand yeah, over fist with the Switch Lite. They definitely will. Yeah. All right, man. Let's move on to the next topic, man. I ain't trying to make this the no damn Nintendo Power fucking podcast. All right, <laughs> Nintendo so, podcast. <laughs> the next, the next topic is uh, we're gonna go to the next segment, Vitamin G Gaming Rant segment, and I'm gonna let. Uh, I'm gonna let uh, Dante uh, segue into this, man. You, you know what? This, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show it on the screen. Come on, you really want this. me to do this? Yeah, yeah come man, on. You, 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 oh, it's, fuck. It's, it's, let it out, bro. <sighs> All right. So you know what it is. You know what time it is. I I have uh, I have been preaching. I have been yelling from the fucking rooftops. I have been that fucking statue of Jesus on the Brazilian fucking hills with my arms wide open, preaching this shit about loot boxes, about microtransactions, about they are the fucking devil, the scourge, and the thing that will kill the fucking gaming industry. Well, we all thought EA was bad, but fucking, fucking take two came over and said, hold my fucking beer, and have literally put in a fucking casino in their game where you can buy real money from shark cards and use that money in their fucking casino for little fucking things you can get in-game. Like... I, I, are we are, are we at this are we at this point yet where we can now officially turn around and say that at this point all microtransactions in video games are the devil incarnate? Because I mean, not, not just not just Wait. that you could officially you could officially say now that there it's basically gambling now. Because people are saying it's not gambling. I mean, you have a casino Mo- now in the game. Mo- like, it's, yeah. There is you know a literal I mean? fucking casino where you can buy shark cards and use real money for items in game. It is this is this is to the point where the gaming industry has gotten such big giant brass balls where they can turn around and say we don't even need to f- we are so untouchable by your laws that we don't even need to hide it behind a fucking loot box. We can just straight up make you gamble for these fucking items. I mean, think about it, man. When, I, like, I understand, but just, you also got people paying $10,000 for a knife in Counter-Strike. But yeah, that's crazy, here's too. The here's the difference. Here's, the, here's, here's where I would say there is, a set, there is a slight difference between the two. With the knife, I'm assuming you're talking about people buying it's buying that from um, like uh, buying the... skins and shit, buying buying skins for weapons and knives and counters. Now it's here's the thing. Lucrative. Yes, I agree, and this is where I turn around and say there is a slight difference. There's not much of a difference, but there is a slight difference. That is a direct transaction from one person yeah. to another who knows what they're buying. Which is why I've turned around and said the devil. The, it's better to go with the devil you know than the devil you don't. I don't know what I'm going to get for loot boxes, but if you're going to offer me a skin for a set value amount, and I know what I'm going to fucking get, I will go with the devil that I know, and I know what I'm buying here with the fucking loot boxes and casino shit. I don't know what I'm buying. I'm either buying an epic win or an epic fucking fail. All right. I I, I, agree, I agree, but I just think it's um it's an addiction that would. Like ruin millennials, and I just millennials probably people in Gen Z. With mobile gaming becoming so big, you know, the mobile market is re- dedicated to females a lot, right? And like, my mom plays that Candy Crush game, and she's always getting asked, "Buy this heart and continue playing. Buy this heart, and you could become this level." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That like you know I said, I mean? microtransactions are the devil. I've like it's I said, addiction. microtransactions are the fucking devil, and they will eventually, and they will, in my opinion, eventually bring the fucking gaming industry to, down to the knees. Because this, like, a, like a, someone said in the chat, and I was going to bring this up after uh, the closing part of my rant, this has already been, this this update, this casino 
in GTA Online has already been banned in 80 fucking countries yeah. or so or a lot of countries. Except we are for the, at the main ones. We're looking at Except you, America. Except for the rich ones, right? Except the for the ones. rich ones. Yeah. Yeah. Goddamn America. All right, but no, seriously. And recently, my country, my own fucking country, God save the queen because we're going down the fucking, we're going down the toilet. Has recently just fucking gone gone and said that loot boxes are not gambling. Now here's the thing. Now the mis the mis uh, the miscommunication here that a lot of people seem to point to and not realize is the the people who made this ruling have pointed out and specifically said that due to our current laws on gambling, <clears throat> our current it does not cover this. And I've said this to FC. FC's heard it heard it himself. I've said it to a couple of guys here, including Nubs. Yeah. The problem is. Exactly. Our laws currently in the US, in the UK, ev a lot of places do not cover basically the internet. They do not cover the new digital age. We are entering a new digital age of gambling. And this yeah. is where it starts. This is where the fucking apocalypse starts. This is where Skynet starts to take over and starts assimilating all of us into mindless <laughs> robots who just shill out all of our fucking money. That's what we're currently Honestly, entering into. Honestly, oh. I feel like in 30 years, there won't be a currency. There'll only be like cryptocurrency, like digital what, currency. What do you have to say? I and this like is for anybody. The US um, dollar won't be there anymore. Mike, can you hear me? My, my bad. My mic? Yeah, yeah I so can, what, I can hear you. Your, your mic's so what, fine. what do you have to say for uh, Yujiro Hama saying, have self control over this problem because this is a, um, rated M for 18 and over? What do you have to say to that? Like, it's technically have, for adults. He said, have self control. Yeah, it's like, we, we should, let's play devil's advocate here. Why do you think companies are doing this? And if they feel like they're doing it by the law, according to what our government is doing, U.S. and, I guess, U.K., where is the, I guess, the wrong here if they're saying, hey, 18 and over, like, you know what it is. It's a casino. You're playing for fake money. It's not like they're hiding it. What's your Can I, I'm sorry. Can, before, before he yeah, gets into that, there's, sorry, me... I'm sorry. That, that just pissed me off. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I will let you get into that in a second. That pissed me off. For I'm sorry. That comment just pissed me off for two reasons. For two reasons. One, your your own goddamn rating system that was set up by the games industry mm -hmm. itself specifically states in the adult rating yep. system that it must inv that anything involving gambling will be rated under an adult only rating. And you want to know why they don't do that? Because very few fucking places actually sell adult rated games. That's why they will not follow the ES ESRB. That's why it's only rate mature. If it was actually a legit regulated system, these games would be rated adult and nowhere would fucking sell them. That's point one. Point two, the reason why they're doing it, and the and Young Yeah recently just did a fucking video about this, where a former CEO of EA was yeah, gloating that, yeah. about how they were able yeah, to manipulate that. the ga gamers into spending money on monetized products. Crazy. Yeah, they he was talking are about, going he was to talking your about like a, Yeah, he was talking about like in, like in, a, in a shooting game where you like went out of ammo. You could just tell them, hey, give me a dollar, you know, I'll give you like 20 more rounds, you know what I mean? Give me another dollar, give me two dollars. That's that You know what I mean? They were literally too, saying man. that. Yeah, so man. I, it was, I just went full SJW. Hilarious. That triggered me. I, I went full <laughs> SJW there. That triggered me, that comment. I'm sorry. It really fucking did. We, we, that's what I'm saying. We, the, the games industry is now in a malicious state where it can take advantage, where it believes it can take advantage of us. And guess what? We've gotten so fucking complacent that they really fucking can. That is why, not too long ago, and these, and I'm going to stick to these words. This is why a game, a game publisher like an EA or an Activision needs to crash and burn. It needs to go down in fucking flames and not rise from those ashes like the fucking phoenix. Because an example needs to be made. Because if an example is not fucking made, then it would. It's just going to get even worse. And the problem is, about, um, the problem is as well. Dante. They're also exploit. Hold on, so they're also exploiting gambling addiction. That is a legit thing. That, that yep. it's been proven. Yeah. They are mm -hmm. exploiting this. Okay, now I'm fucking done. Anyone else? So to, to answer ahead, your, to answer your question, I'm gonna say basically what Dante said, but I want to add this into it. With digital games being um, the way people mostly play games nowadays, when I was a kid, and I, I, I'm still a kid basically, but I, uh, when I was younger, right. You go into a store and buy your game, the employee would tell your mom or your dad, hey, this game is M-rated. Do you still want to buy this game for your son? So, and now with digital games, parents don't ask mm. uh, your kid, can you buy Good this point. game? Is it M-rated? Is it uh, teen-rated or whatever? 
kids just buy the game but purchase download right but before then like i would literally have to ask um like an older uh, friend right to go buy me the game because my mom wouldn't buy me the game right it's like nine years old ten years old so yeah like now like i mentioned how if you're 18 you could gamble basically online what's the problem with that a lot of these kids will buy these games digitally and won't be asked about it being emulated by their parents so that'll be a big problem but yeah Zero Hammer is a savage. He said, LMAO, weak-minded people do exist in this world. I feel no sympathy for them. Even if they're targeting children, bro? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no man, I don't want to, man. I don't want to. I, don't yeah, want I, I, think, I don't know if he's just trolling or what, man. Zero Hammer in the chat, man. Just like I said earlier, parents is at <laughs> fault. He's blaming the parents. But, again, like, I mean, I guess I guess that's the case. But parents are home all yeah, the time. Man, he, he and the kids about, are, kids are, kids are being about, computer smart, man. They could definitely go into people's. Yeah. They know they know the internet better than their parents, man. Lupe, if you and he talked me. about he talked about sympathy about these uh, people, these leaders, right? Yeah. The majority of people being exploited are kids. The people That's buying I mean. these Reeboks and everything, they're kids. They're kids. DK, I mean, I know a, I know a kid, bro. I know Default a kid. Right? Ultimate He's like eleven team, years old. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Do the here's the question I gotta ask you then. Here we go. Here's the question I gotta ask him. He says the parents are at fault. Here's the thing, and I mentioned this last time. I did. The ESRB rating was only set up to appease a bunch of politicians. Yep, facts. They knew, they knew, the gaming industry knew back then that their audience was children. They knew for a fact that it was to yeah. children, to, to teens, to young, adu- to young adults. That's the audience of video games. I would say it's like 12 to 18. It's a, mi- it's, a mix, it's a mixture, really. But my point is, they set that up only to appease them. That's what they, but they knew. It's been that way since the fucking beginning of the, of the age. Kids have been playing horror games and mature games since the be fucking dawn of time. All right. All right. So uh, that argument, the argument that the parents are at fault, cannot be used for that reason and for the simple reason parents don't really know what's in these kids' games. Yes, they're at fault that they should fucking know, but parents don't know everything that's in the game. And here's the other problem with that fucking specifically with the GTA with the GTA example. This wasn't in the game at launch. This oh, was updated in later. That's true. That's a, so that's a like solid six point. years later, man. Yeah, that's six a solid years point. later. And shout out to Jurahami. He said, "Man, I'm just." I said, "I thought we were having a discussion." I'm just stating my opinion. And fair enough. I wish you, you know, could get on here to, to elaborate more no, no, on I, that. No, you, um, you, no, you, you can have that opinion. It's just the the problem is, for me, is. Uh, the 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 blend the parents argument can be made is spe- and I agree with in some I, do, I agree in some extent it's like if a game has this kind of monetized gambling the parents should know but the problem is is this casino shit was only just recently added so how were yeah, the how were the parents say, meant um, to know I want to say kids hide hide this shit as well like I know a kid who um want to buy V books for twenty bucks, right? You know the, the currency in Fortnite. He would tell his parents, "I want to buy this video game that's cost twenty bucks," but he buys V bucks instead because parents will not know what they'll be like. What are you? You're buying money in a game? Like what? Yeah. they'll look at you like you're stupid. You know what I mean? What are you? You're buying an outfit in a game? Just buy a game. They'll tell their parents, "I want to buy this game. I want to buy Minecraft for twenty bucks, basically." And no, they go buy V bucks instead. You know Fair what enough, I mean, man. Uh, everyone so, else, is, everyone else is quiet, man. This is an open topic, man. Kofi, Reggie, Farrell. Yeah, no, what's, talk your, about what's your take it. on this, man? You, I mean, I know we I know we talked a lot about this, and I feel like it keeps etching back in. And then if we, if we if someone doesn't fight, if we don't do anything about it, man, shit like this happens. So yeah, wait, I can hold touch on, hold on. Quick. No, Nubs can't. Hold on. Sorry, Nubs can't say shit. He's buying Madden. <laughs> Oh, point, man. You're part oh, of the yeah, problem, man. Nubs. You fucking. Oh, that's true, man. <laughs> yes, that's true. yes. I bought Madden. That's I bought true. Madden. But the other, the other problem is, I don't, I don't spend money on Madden outside of buying the actual yeah, game. You better, you better not Madden. buy that. You better not buy that Ultimate Card bullshit, man. Just no, I mean, I, do man. I play Ultimate Team? Yes, but I, do I spend money in Ultimate Team? No, no, I don't. Uh, yeah, a lot of people I, do that though, huh? If I see if I see a fucking All Star or Hall of Fame Randy Moss on your on your Ultimate Team, I'm bro, I'm pulling yeah, your card, man. bro. Okay. Well, I say I'm really <laughs> quick. I, I wanted to piggyback on what Mob and Antacrosses was talking about from the Young Yeah video. Basically, Young Yeah highlighted that they are targeting what um the uh, how do you say the CEOs um they, they've basically adapted their sales to the science of how the mine works. 
So right, when yeah. they when they start talking about like what was it, guys? Correct me. It was called hot state, right? Where your mind is, yeah. uh, I guess, in, experiencing because a, you're a natural high, right? And they want you to have less logic based on that natural high you're experiencing. So giving you, offering you an option to spend money at a certain time is everything. That's mm-hmm. that, that's what they're right. designing the game for. That's why I, I was trying to be silent because this was my uh, soapbox last week. But yeah. the fact that they're not saying, hey, we want to make a last of us, they give you this great story that gives you an emotional response to a good story. Like, no, we just want to get you to spend more on microtransactions. That's what we're going to have our developers work towards, right? What's the end goal now? That's why that pisses me off. So, yeah, That's Kofi, go, when you go, talk go about, ahead, when you oh, talk no, no, about, no, 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 you talk about that. Mom, hold on, let, 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 let uh, Farrell go and you get, jump in. Go ahead, Farrell. I, I was going to say, because you know, everyone jumped on notes for a second, I think that if you're going to buy a game that does have microtransactions, it's just important that you don't partake in that part of the game. Mm. So, like, like for instance, I'm not buying 2K because I don't feel like paying $80 for VC just for my character to make a layup. I, I'm also not going to stay on a pedestal, right? I'm a PlayStation guy. I also play Gran Turismo Sport. And as you know, Grand Turismo Spork has Grand uh, has Grand has uh, microtransactions. <laughs> Deci- <laughs> uh, second party, yeah, yeah it also has. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot once you go into that space. So, That's yeah, the way it so, is. I mean, there's so many games that have microtransactions. It's 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 getting to the point where it's hard to avoid, um, especially with you know the advent of esports and people trying to buy their way into being competitive. Yeah. Um, especially with the big prize pools out there that they have nowadays, like the, the kid that played Fortnite just won three million dollars over the weekend. We might have to I talk mean, about that next week, man. But that's yeah. that's true. But but I guess my question to you guys, how do you again I have to keep coming back to this, how do you combat this? Like you just don't do partake prevent this you, you, from you just can't partake in that part of the of the actually the I game, wouldn't um you can't partake in, in that part of I know, would I would disagree with you saying just don't partake in it. I, I want like every I want PewDiePie I want other YouTubers to address it because that's what makes these companies they don't like that PR. You cannot yeah. partake in it, but kids will partake in it. I want yeah. PewDiePie I want all these YouTubers to give them that bad PR, and that's when you'll see it start. That's when you'll see it decrease to the point where they actually should stop doing it. Yeah, but it's hard. It's hard to do that when doing. a lot of these YouTubers are making money off of this. Oh, off yeah, of this same exactly. Game. They're getting oh, they're getting okay. sponsored. Yeah, yeah, sponsored so, by 2K, sponsored companies. by Ma- EA, yeah. FIFA. You yeah, know, they, so, they, they're getting paid yeah. to promote. They're getting paid to promote Ultimate Team. They're getting paid to promote these things. So it's like, it's, it's, it's yeah. hard to it's hard to put that on them. But I mean, like, if for instance a video game, you know, you know, ninety percent of the sales, if only if only you know twenty percent of the market participates in microtransactions, yeah, they're going to continue. If that number starts to dwindle down to ten to mm. seven. If that number continues to go down, then they're then and then sales continue to drop as a result of that. Also, yeah. they're going to look at their game and say, "Well, the features that people care about aren't the features that require microtransactions." So, I guess the next strategy for them would be, "Well, let's put microtransactions in the things that they care about, and then mm. it'll then factor into no people just hate microtransactions. We just got to stop doing it and make good games." It's, I will say the, this. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Dante. No, I was just going to say, at the moment right now, we. We, we, we in this panel can just fucking talk till we're blue in the face about not participating, not participating. The problem is, is guys and like-minded people like us make up, that we make up a big minority, but we are the minority of the, of the people who buy microtransactions in the video game community. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest problem. True. Yeah. So well, I would we say could, like, in terms, hold on. in terms of like hardcore so the, gamers, my bad, my bad, keep going. So to me, like I said, the only way one of this this is going to happen is one of two ways now, and I I th- these are worst case scenarios. One of one of them, I mean, if EA crashes and burns, I mean, I hope the developers can find other works, but I I want I, I want, I'm not going to lie, I want shed a tear. Uh, is if one of these publishers just crashes and burns as a result of it, because uh, you know uh, eventually the bubble bursts. It's just a case of how long until that happens, or government regulation yeah, and that government. that's government regulation and that is the absolute worst case scenario that's like that is that is that is the fucking doomsday plan see so, yeah, i want to go I back think... to what oh go ahead oh thank you i want to go back to what kofi said about when you're in the heat of a moment 
about those microtransactions. Um, yeah. They said that they want that because think about it, right? You need ammo for your gun. You just ran out of ammo, and it says yeah. one more dollar for some uh, t- twenty rounds, right? If you're in the heat of a moment, you're about to be killed. Your KD is about to be ruined. All this and these stats and everything. Kids will be like, "It's only a dollar." My mom will notice it on her credit card. Oh. No, they think they think shit like that. They think shit like that. And that's how they buy the yeah. microtransaction. But that's just like crazy. I was pointing at, it, it's like it's like a literal. Uh, I don't know how to say it. I don't want to say it's just science, but I guess they've taken studies, right, of people in that situation, right. and they're just more likely to be more lenient <laughs> with their spending. Yeah, I would. In that I would just love to see games. If you want to make you know money off of additional content, I would love to see that be geared more towards DLC that you know people can really enjoy. Now I know for certain games like. You know, trash games like Fortnite, you know, Madden, stuff like that. It's hard to make you good DLC. But, yeah. but, yeah, I mean, I think yeah. quality DLC would be much more uh, beneficial to, to gamers and, and to the industry than, than just, you know, microtransactions. Don't sell me bullets. Sell me maps. I I agree, bro. Some of the best um, DLC I've ever played was uh, The Last of Us Left Behind. That was mm. like two, three hours worth of a... Uh, DLC, like almost four hours. It was great. I think it's an evolution. About, uh, yeah, go ahead, sir. You got to learn about Ellie's background, about her sexuality. I don't really care about that. I was kind of disappointed, to be honest. Because I played the last one when I was like 12, right? So I really liked Ellie, and then I found out she's lesbian. I'm like, ah. I don't know. I don't really rock with her like that. I'm just playing. I rock with her, but that kind of sucked. But besides that, I mean, that was some good ass DLC. I just don't like the SJW shit. You know, we gotta talk about the sexuality and the DLC kind of, kind of. Like, if you want to sell me like new, if you want to sell me guns that are, you know, that weren't a part of the original game, but they're pretty cool or something like that. Yeah, I could live with that. But like, you know, the loot boxes, no you know, ammo, you know. See, Pharaoh, the problem with that. that, the problem with that, that idea you just said is it already exists. Look up a game called Black Light Retribution. They do that exact same shit, and you want to know what they are? They're microtransactions, and you don't even really own the guns. You fucking rent them. Wow, that's <laughs> wow I didn't even know that game. Like, because I know, like, I know, like Forza. When new cars come out, they have DLC for you know new cars that come out, like new models. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Like, if there's like, like if they throw the new uh, Corvette and and Forza Horizon, and I want to buy it, that I, I don't have a problem with you giving me that option. That's what I'm saying. But that's, that's additional. It's DLC. That's what the point yeah, is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. DLC. I don't mind DLC. Like, yeah, but, but you like, see, the, I don't like yeah. what I don't like people mention about uh, add ons. A lot of these devs, they literally hold content back. You can never find out if they really hold that content back, right? Like, you'll never know unless you're a dev. So don't give me. Devs, they, don't, do that, they do that sneaky shit. They cut out the game on, on this yeah. and sell it to you a few months later. That that's is yeah. scummy. So, Sp- that's, look, that's, yeah, look, I love. Scummy. Look, I love Spider Man. But they did that shit. They did that yeah. with the extra story. Tell me how you, how just two months later you have you have more, more another whole story for Spider Man. Yeah, I had the same. That was scummy. That was. Uh, I didn't. I didn't like that. That's a Should've whole been another. Game. That's a whole another topic that we could definitely get into later. But uh, if I'm I'm gonna send this out to to, to Reggie and or um yeah or, or Nubs to close out because we want to get onto our last topic. I definitely want to touch base on that Naughty Dog stuff. So, so Reggie and or Nubs, you guys have anything to say about this? Our VGP rant section segment. Uh, uh, it's trash. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna keep mine short and sweet. Like microtransactions are garbage. Like I, I try my best to avoid them, but like there's like mobile games and stuff. I'll find myself, you know, subconsciously fucking, you know, buying shit for. But it's trash, and it, and it, 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 it it's it that itself is an addiction in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Like with the, with the probability of you know like these like you know character card games and shit like that for mobile like oh you know you can get this character or this this thing if you keep you know doing this this multi summon thing and up oh, oh you need some more like you know you get addicted to it. like up oh, nope not in that one not in that one, not in that one you're like you're you're on the search for you know something that you want like it's great business practice but it is really shitty for us it's really shitty for the consumer fair side enough, fair enough Reggie your take. Yes, it is it I'm trying I'm making sure too. Yeah, it's just um a Grand Theft Auto, particularly a lot of Grand Theft Auto online. I'm really into it. Um so this casino update is pretty much designed for me. Uh for the most part. Like I 
huge mansions in it. I've got a bunch of cars. Uh, I've got houses all over the Are city. Are you serious, bro? Like, you you're really into this? GTA. What's your mom? You're into yeah. GTA six years or, like, seven years later, man? Like People like yeah. it, man. I don't know. I don't believe you. Well, <laughs> they made me interested to jump back into it to see what it was all about. Um, they're, they're, particularly games like GTA or Madden, there's this level of realism uh, that is a bit insidious when it comes to how they're charging their microtransactions. Mm-hmm. Look at a game like Destiny that also had it, and their community kind of revolted against it really strongly. I think part of that is because there's a level of disconnect between what I'm getting and what I'm doing. There's no way I can know what it's like to be a guardian, right? So if I buy emote or buy a new I gun... Know, man, I find... I find that GTA Online shit pretty corny because when I was like on the PS3 2014 or whatever, they had like little ass 12 year olds dressing in all red thinking they game painted and shit. That's what I'm these, saying. I mean, you just put the point. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of kids on, on GTA Online. And, and <laughs> it, anyway, Reggie, Reggie, finish your point, man. But they don't do that in Destiny. Little kids don't go around and think that they're gangbanging. They think that they're gangbanging because that's the closest thing, that they can, <laughs> that's the closest thing to reality to them. Facts. There's nothing like the real. Like not like you can ride around in a flying DeLorean, but there's this level of realism. Particularly, it's a casino. It's literally just gambling. Like there's nothing more interesting or outputting about it, which they already have in the regular story mode. If I remember, like the game is full of little mini games. It's just like Red Dead Redemption. You can play poker, right? Yeah. yeah. Actually, they had an online poker gambling casino in Red Dead. Right? It's, it's just you're just playing poker. Yeah, you can play poker, but I don't, I don't think you like you gamble the money in poker. Though. But just imagine yeah. if they like, did. Yeah. Like you read that where you spent money to spend fake money to play poker. Wow. I mean, I don't know. I've that's, never. That's played, a dangerous. Uh, that's a dangerous. Uh, you know. I never. Um, there, man. I never played that on the on the online version of Red Dead Two, but I think I did in the single player. There is so hard, hard, like, you can actually go to the casino and make some real money, maybe. If you're gonna lose real money, regardless. I mean, perhaps yes, but then that's a whole nother issue. <laughs> yeah, then you gotta deal with then you have to deal with gambling laws in your state and when you play. Yeah, they don't they don't want that because they've never had to deal with it. Um, but the truth, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that the the consumer you could choose to go to the casino and spend real money with the possibility of making real money. This is true. Or right, right down there, or buy yeah. virtual money. To gamble to make more virtual money to buy. But you got you gotta be game. what? How old to go into a casino? You got twenty one, right? right? Yeah. Twenty one. Yeah. But you got you got thirteen yeah, year olds playing Grand Theft Auto Five. It's not even eighteen. I think it's, yeah, it is twenty one. I think. Probably. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, that's it's what I'm saying. It's very predatory. But I mean, like as an adult, you know, for the adults in the room, I'm just like, gotcha. You tell me. You're you're you're, you're 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 a true. If you're, as an adult, you're a loser if you're in the Grand Theft Auto Casino <laughs> instead of the real casino. I'm just saying. Hey, man. There's a thing and called whales, and they're they're legit. They don't like losing, and they like to buy every fucking thing they can. So I'd also like to point out about GTA Online. This is something that has been pointed out before by Great Amend and Me. Rest in peace, Total Biscuit. Um, I believe it was him, actually. Um, but the thing is with GTA Online, this is from someone also who has been playing that game since PlayStation 3 launch. Um, that game in over time eventually got skewed to the point where if you fall behind at any fucking point or you yeah, join right. that game now, you will need to go out of your way to buy shark cards to gain an advantage to the point where you're not getting griefed by high level fucking players. That's facts. Otherwise, oh, yeah. you're fucked. Like I, I got, yeah, you get yeah, I got back yeah. into it on the PC. And this was around the time that gun smuggling came out. And I had no fucking money to my name. And I, I was, like, fucking grinding so fucking hard. And you'd have to, j- just to get everything in the game, you'd have to be grinding hundreds, hundreds of hours. I'm t- maybe, maybe, maybe even a thousand hours, maybe more. I'm not joking. Or... You could just slide into that store and buy these mm-hmm. lovely shark cards for real money and give yourself. Hey, a I want to add in. I want to add on that, Don, because I remember I uh, started playing GTA again like two years ago on the PS4. You spawn in, right? All these guys that are rank 100, you know, rank 200, 
they literally hunt your ass down in Tiana. They'll keep killing you because yes, you're like a will. rank ten. They they, they love yeah. that. They, they they hunt your ass down until your ass leaves that session. Until you join another session where you see another guy that's rank two hundred <laughs> hunting your ass down and wipe. You just don't want to play the game anymore. You get hunted down. The, and the, no, no, and it's not it's fun either, playing it's, passive mode. It's, yeah, it's either you, either you quit or you grind. Get hunted you down, know, or you buy. <laughs> You really, you I'm know, wanted, most people right. go with the quickest route, and that's buying. But and one of the a- most hilarious, pl- oh, sorry, just one of the most hilarious things as well, which is the biggest fucking kick in the nuts, and it's it's something that's absolutely ridiculous in my in my opinion. You've and then you've got fucking modders coming in who mod mm, and give a lot. No, hear me out, hear me out. This is even more ridiculous. Then you got modders who come in who mod a lot of money and give it to everybody mm. because yeah, it's those. it's some it's some uh, I, it's some kind of fucking protest against the fucking bullshit in yeah. that game. They just mod a lot of money onto people and guess You're what? Talking about those guys. Hold on. And the problem is who, um... the problem is the people who receive that money, despite the fact that they never asked for it, despite the fact that they didn't want anything to do with it, they get banned. Those people who received it get punished, despite the fact that they wanted nothing to do with it. That's crazy. So you're talking about those guys who like just go into the session and just they drop money, right? They just drop money on the floor. People surround they just, them because they just drop a bunch of money. Exactly. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I okay. So just just give an example. In one, in one, um, in no, no, Lakers. I'm I'm gonna address that as well. Uh, the other difference is is there was one session that I was in on PC. I dropped into the session just doing some of my shit, and then all of a sudden I'm stopped. I'm I'm taken out of my car, and then suddenly fucking money bags are dropping from the fucking and I can't move, and money bags are dropping from the fucking sky into my possession. And by the end of it, I ended up with ten fucking million. So and you're about to say a billion. No, no, the no. I do believe it. there is a point to where the fu- I do believe there is a point to where you can't, uh, where even modders can't do it because they'll get caught a lot easier. But yeah, everybody in that everybody in that fucking session was ten million richer. I right? I spend a little of it, yeah. and then I log off. I come back. Uh, I can't remember how long later. All of that money's gone, and I'm. I believe I was actually in the negative at that point, and it was like. What the fuck? I mean, I didn't, you I didn't ask, like, I didn't ask for this money. I didn't ask. You were money. like, I'm guessing you were like, man, I should have spent this shit before I got all we're my going, music away. Going into the weeds, guys. <laughs> we're going into the weeds, man. Let's uh, let's get our final topic, and before we get into verses, we only have like 15 minutes to talk about this. Uh, and I'm gonna segue this. I'm gonna segue this to Reggie because I think you're. I mean, you and um, Kofi, you guys are both in the tech tech field, right? Uh, software, I believe. Um, so the former employees of the last of us developer, uh, and the whole thing about crunch. So I'm gonna look at the article here and have you guys look at it. Let me see here. Now they're saying that, let's see here. Basically just the short, you can read this, that naughty dog pretty much expects certain levels of, uh, I guess commitment per se is what we call crunch where you work more than the scheduled amount of time and a lot of those times the people who are tending to work more and extensive overtime are the ones who are actually you know low paying minimum wage jobs and that seems to be happening i think earlier we were, there was discussion with red dead 2 where that was happening um other developers as well it seems like it keeps creeping back up there's no union in the video game space so I want to first get you guys uh, thoughts on this and then we'll try to see if there's whether there's not a solution or is there one that we could implement. So I'm going to send this straight to Reggie. What's your take on this, man? Like, like, do you yourself, I know you're in the tech world. Do you, does this kind of creep in in, in, your, in your in your place of work or, or what's your take? Um, so this is probably like if I were to rant, this would be on my um, I despise the I the idea of crunch. I, I despise the cult of personality around it of course you have to work a little bit harder um you don't get to be top developer unless you're putting in 80 hours a week uh you know obviously this is why you aren't making the big money because you're not willing to put in these hours 
you know, who cares if you do all these things? And you can see it in tech all the time anyway. If you, uh, if you're young, if you're married, and Kofi might be able to speak to this, if you're married with a child, compared to a fresh out of college 22 year old who has no obligations, who's willing to put in that time and effort, they will look towards you on something like that. The issue is, is that this, it, it, these standards are created by people to, I think, personally kind of abuse the workers and get the most mm-hmm. out of them, them respectively. Because I've, I have a, my sense of how, you, how people are supposed to work is that you try to get a company for as much money as they will get you, and a company will try to get you for as much work as they can do without paying you the most. Um, and there's always this balance in between it. So you feel like you're being worked harder. You ask for a raise. Um, they feel like you aren't. So maybe they don't give you a raise, so forth and so on. Um, the reality is there's always going to be a little bit of crunch. There's going to be some time where you have to work an extra hour, some extra hours. Um, in the video game industry, it probably a little more common or even in any type of software uh, development industry, particularly because you've got deadlines to meet. Deadlines aren't set by the people who are making the game. Uh, They're set awesome. by people who. Are they going? Okay, I think I also I also have a feeling like that these devs, when they have to overwork, they can't go home and keep working on the game at home because they they might be afraid that their game might get leaked. So they have to stay in the office, right, and keep working instead of just taking the computer home and working on the game, right? You know what I mean? I feel like they have to stay in the office in case the game might get leaked if they bring their home to bring the computer to the house. Yeah, but oh, like, it's yeah, still working. Like I'm still yeah. counted for that eighty hours in which I don't want yeah. to. Like it's I just still don't... working, but think about it like this: if I'm if I, if I own that studio, I don't want somebody going with parts of the game home. There's also a difference, possibly, though. Possibly and I think, being leaked. I think there's also something you're completely missing at this uh, at that juncture as well. Is I doubt every single member of that team has a state of the art PC with that software installed for them to leave at home for them to complete or finish yeah. that work. You wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. And but you shouldn't oh, hold. Yeah, it makes sense. Back because. You set a deadline that's unreasonable. After but I, mean, I don't think The Last of Us 2 has an unreasonable deadline. I mean, that game's been in development for who knows how many years. If there's an issue of excessive crunch, then there was an unreasonable deadline yeah. set. Because if you, like I said, there's, crunch is not the problem. It's when it's excessive. It's when it's almost throughout the entire life cycle of a process. That means you don't have a good project manager. That means you're not, you don't understand how to set and actual project goals and understand how to make them on time based on the team that you have and the development that's being done. Imagine like in any other industry, imagine sports where they're telling you that, oh, you have to play, you gotta play Monday, you gotta play Tuesday, you gotta play one day every week. Football, you gotta play one day every week, every eight hours. I, or then, we can- Then that's, that, that doesn't can, make any sense to that. That's not, you, that didn't make, that, hold on, that doesn't make any sense. You said one day every week, and then you said every eight hours. Excuse me, you're right. Sense. You play once every 16 hours. Okay, because you said one day every one week. Day I didn't, I didn't, every I didn't 16, 16 hours, instead of perhaps one game a week. But even okay. even more so than that, but, but even more so than that, I think like this article says here, um, the implied choice, right? They're talking about how the Naughty Dog employees were told that while they weren't required to work late hours and overtime, including weekends, they still needed to finish their work, right? So basically, they didn't have a choice. Even you, if you, if they if your contract says you're working forty hours a week, cool, but you are. It's frowned upon to work those said forty hours when they want you to work more than that. And then they go on to further say that uh, the policy created a large amount of peer pressure among Naughty Dog staffers, gu- guilting each other into working late night shifts and weekends with the instances instances of 24-hour shifts you know what i mean like that's not in the contract but yet exactly kind of forced and to do so or get fired right. like that's this level of uh world that's being shaped and like that's the environment that's like oh that's what it's supposed to be that's not what it's supposed to be because now the people who actually say screw this i'm going home they're not looked at when the next promotion's coming around they're also blackballed <laughs> 
thing the highest amount of raise they can get unless they push hard. So it's all about like how much they're taking from them or getting them for everything that they're worth. You think it's like you think it's like guilting them into uh, to keeping to keeping on the work. It's definitely guilting them, Facts, and man. it's and like I I don't particularly know if unions are the right way because some can be good, some can be bad. How how would you um, combat but, this then? Because I th- I think this is only going to get worse. <laughs> the bigger the games, I mean, the bigger the budgets. Them. I mean, that's probably can, mid- but we can't do shit about it. No, yeah. If I if I had the ability to, you have to change the environment of how we view working. Right. And what is can I can I? Oh, sorry. What's important when it comes to actually getting a job done, and on, for the most minimum thing, just actually have people make a proper project schedule. Again, we were talking about Anthem, in which the people didn't even know the name of the game until it was announced. So how do you that that should show you right there that no one on that team or at least the leaders of that team are bad at their job. So I bet they still get to go home while everybody else is still spending twenty four hours there. Oh, the leaders. Of course, you know how that works. Uh, so I think we should talk about let's talk about the hypocrisy and um some of these PlayStation niggas what you who, mean? Uh, who said they cared, who pretended to care about the devs that at Epic and Rockstar. Ooh. But then all of a sudden, when it comes to Naughty Dog, you know what I mean? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> you know, it's Naughty Dog. Let's not talk that's, about that. That's when loyalty you know of the I mean? brand is poisonous, man. That's, got, uh, I mean, that pe- was some people. hypocrisy, man. It's crazy. People can I, are people, can, man. Uh, go, go, go ahead, Dante. And I, w- I want to hear Kofi's p- t- uh, point on this as well. No, no, Kofi. Co- I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. So, I mean, obviously, they're not... Um, no, dog, we're not the only ones. CD Projekt no. Red was, yeah, yeah, that's another was one too. heavily criticized for it. With CD Projekt Red, there's the there's not the excuse, but there's the there's the argument to be made that obviously Pol- uh, in Poland, those kind of really harsh hours and stuff, it's it's part of the culture because a lot of a lot of American developers who went to work at um, CD Projekt Red had the same had these crunch ex- uh, crunch uh, problems as well. But not really anybody who is Polish who works for uh, CD Projekt Red had that because it's part of the culture. But it did come down to a really bad time management. I think another aspect we need to look at is um, it's obviously upper management or certain developer or certain um, uh, sections of the developers falling behind dramatically, like Co- like um, Zero said, like Reggie said about um, Anthem. The problem yeah. is with that game is they never even. The problem is they scrap. They kept scrapping ideas and implementing new ideas and shit like that. Like I said when we had that topic, um, the one of the fucking one of the suits from EA had to tell them to put the fucking jetpack in back in because it was so fucking fun, which they originally took out. So it comes down to real bad fucking uh, team coordination as well. The fact that they that they keep taking shit out or don't have any fucking ideas like Mass Effect Andromeda, like that they they didn't even know what the f- they 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 didn't even have a fucking solid game or any ideas f- for the first six months, I believe. Another aspect, I- and this is this is one thing I would turn around and say would alleviate a lot of these problems is. A lot of these companies are owned by publishers, and these publishers have final say on when these games need to be released, and they never ever, in very rarely, turn around and say, "We'll give you some extra months to to finish it off." No, they they fucking put the foot down. They put the foot down like a bunch of fucking Nazis that they are, and say, "No, the game needs to be out now. You you make it fucking happen." The fucking they're the goddamn Grim Reaper of fucking of uh, developers, and they end up killing developers because of this. So maybe, maybe one aspect that could help alleviate some of this is self-publishing, because then developers mm-hmm. can uh, have that extra time to be able to make these games. I like how you brought up that point of um, the publishers, right? Because the thing about Pokemon, a lot of people are saying that game was done uh, lazily. That's even a word. That it was done kind of lazy because the Pokemons, they have the same animation from the 3DS. Yeah. And then the guys who the devs were saying we didn't have enough time, we gotta make it come out at this typical typical release date. I'm guessing Nintendo had a saying that you better better come out now, you know, this day. Or you know, fuck you, right? I don't know. Probably probably what happened. And then the work 
you talked about work culture in um in Poland. Uh, that's a good point because the work work culture is different everywhere, right? I mean, in America, the work culture is 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 there, but not like how it probably is in Poland, especially in Japan. The work culture there is crazy. Uh, I read about an article about animators who get paid like eight hundred bucks a month. And that's like Jeez. that's that's nothing in Tokyo, right? Where all these studios are at, they're in Mad Tokyo and all these yeah. all these uh, all these good cities in Japan. You know what I mean? So eight hundred bucks a month to be an animator, even though anime is growing every year. You know what I mean? Making making more money in every year, these animators are getting paid the same. Man, they're the soul of the studio, right? But they get paid barely anything because the work coach in Japan. Fair enough, man. That's that's a good, that's a good take. But uh, let, let, let me go to Kofi and I guess Nubs or anyone else want to chime in on your take on this, especially Kofi because this is Naughty Dogs. This this is on the Sony realm, man. What, what what's your take on this, and why why would Naughty Dog have crunch if Sony's the master of, I guess, making devs have the time and creative freedom to make their games? I'm just I'm kind of surprised by this. I try I try to relate to the developers at Naughty Dog, but to be honest, I've never worked for a video game developer. Um, I do work with developers all the time. I've done a ton of development in my workspace. Um, and so I I try to judge them in, in the most objective manner because I had an employer before where um, very similarly, we were required to work 40 hours and then we would be we would be told that there were outside events that we needed to participate in to help market our brand. What we found is the more you participated outside of those 40 work hours, the better chance you had at being promoted or getting a pay raise. And I hated that other stuff, okay? Because it wasn't anything technical. I love talking Mm -hmm. about programming. I want to talk about um, very technical stuff, but they wanted to talk about business practices and that just didn't interest me. What did I end up doing? I ended up finding employment elsewhere. So when I see the scenario somewhat the same where they're saying, hey, you know, it's not policy, but then there's a culture around it. I've seen that. You know, I'm in the D.C. area. A lot of uh, young professionals in the D.C. area have this. So I want you to talk on it. Yeah, they, they, they get... They obsess over things like certifications, like, oh, I want to get my next technical certification. I, I won't go into too much detail. Um, and, that, and that competitiveness... I like that personally. So I'm 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 almost a little compromised in my judgment of it because if we're talking about people who are super passionate about technology and, and getting better at it, I might be one of those people to do a, a few extra hours just because of how much I loved it. I, I, I mean, I'm the guy here who I, I learned another language so I could play a video game. So I don't good point. <laughs> I, I, I feel I feel a little bit weird. Um but um I I don't I don't generally I, I try to relate by saying I didn't like my last employer uh, for the same reason that these people are complaining here and I'm trying to throw them, throw them a bone on that and it, it, it's a it's a culture that's strong in various cities around the country and so <laughs> I don't know, guys it's hard for me you to know, judge now, it because it's it's in a space I care about about, okay now you go ahead about, about the um. Now, now we're talking about the crunch time thing. I want to mention that um, that we should give more credit to those devs who aren't game directors, who are just the character designers, who are yes, uh, guys who the guys who make the environments. Because every time a game blows up and is successful and does this and that, we give all the praise to Neil Druckmann, Corey Barlog, the game director, yeah, the, he- the heads of the studio. We give yeah. yeah, we give the praise to and- all these guys, and we never give we never even mention the names of the people. Who make the characters? Who make the environments? Who make the mechanics? It's which is you know what I mean? Yeah. In fairness, okay. I, I hate to play devil's advocate on this, but if I remember correctly, didn't uh, didn't Bar uh, Barlog actually go out of his way to say, yes, you shouldn't yeah. be thanking me. You should be thanking my damn team." Essentially, I, and I and I like that he's I, I like that he did that. But these like people at IGN um, and stuff like that, they don't give a f- they only, they only talk about Corey Barlog. Sometimes they, talk about, they, they talk about... uplift people a little bit too much. I agree. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's game journalism for you. <laughs> but I, I yeah, guess they, I'll try they to... suck. Uh-huh. They suck off these game directors so much. They never talk about the guys behind the scenes who they never yeah. mention. Man, it's kind of fucked up. I completely so, agree. Yeah. But real quick, I guess I'll, I'll try to just close out some thoughts. Um, 
I generally disagree with the amount of hours that the QA contractors are talking about. Some of these people who are paid uh, far less than the, the well-known developers or well-known people in, on the team. A uh, hundred hours is just is way too much. Twenty-four hours because I can work so hard is absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, hours I'm there, shifts. <laughs> yeah, twenty-four hour shifts. Um, that it, it just, that just blows my mind. Even for the most I don't know nerdy subject, I'm gonna go ahead and go home. And if you judge me for that, then I just need to take my work elsewhere. I, I guess I try to take the mentality that here in the states we do have the option to choose our employer and to choose our career field. Um, and I, I more lean, uh, I guess, in, in just taking advantage of that. Because I did have that situation. I hated it. But I'm, I'm just going to see what I can control before I complain. But that's just me. That's just, All right, fair, that's just fair my enough, perspective. Man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this to, F- to Farrell and Nubs, man. You guys have the last say on this. But I just want to add something real quick. That's true in America and other places. You could just find another work, especially if you're in the IT field. You could just find another IT firm. But in the video game space, there's not that many places to work. There's only a handful of developers, right? And in that, if you were to leave one, what 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 stops Naughty Dog from saying, "Hey, don't hire this guy. He's not a good worker. He's not what he doesn't fit the video game, like I guess uh, culture." And that's coming from Naughty Dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's the chance I mean, of you I getting doubt. another big job? Like going to three four three or going to other places that are big. Like what is stop? Or like I like see. How's that? I see where you're coming from. Yeah, but I doubt you would want to work and not get fired, I, especially if you want to be in the I video game like, industry. I feel like you're not gonna go out the way and you know bash this guy and say don't hire this guy. I feel like, I feel like it's a bitch. I feel like that doesn't happen. But if that does happen, that is that's extremely they, gay. It should not happen. Hey, but their project managers definitely all know each other. It's a very exactly. small space. That's what I'm trying to say. They all know each other. Had uh, FC on the team. Yeah, you know, he quit. He just couldn't handle it. Well, Dak, I'm not hiring him because it's exactly. the culture for everywhere. So it's not that exactly. there's not even saying bad worker. They just saying he doesn't fit within our culture. Yeah, that's the point I'm making. Exactly. All right. So, 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 Pharaoh uh, yeah, and, and Nels, man, what's your take on us before we get a versus, man? Any, any points? Do you agree? Disagree? Any? Any? Uh, I guess Devil's Advocate here. If it wasn't for Crunch, we wouldn't be having. Game of the year games, or or do you disagree with that? No, I, I think um, I think crunching is is definitely an issue, and one of the biggest things I just I think that these game to these game publishers are pushing too hard for these titles to come out. Some of them because we're getting all these games so fast. I mean, me as a consumer of video games, I don't even have time to play half the games they're putting out. That's facts. So I, this falls I, crazy. I don't feel like I don't feel like that rush is necessarily necessary if you space it out a little bit more you know that gives me the consumer more time to digest and say hey i might want to try that out um because some games i just i I don't have the chance to say that but i like how much how much how much games come out now because i mean they're all different genres right whatever your favorite genre is buy those type of games right like you don't see a bunch of shooting but you're not you're not buying all those games in november man unless you have a like you know endless right that makes sense i would want games to come out in fucking summertime please that way we don't have no damn job. Yeah. Like I want some games to come yeah, out that, here, but yeah, like yeah, that's dumb. Like, I don't know why if, they don't come out during the summer. I never understood that. If if you could just if if you could give developers a little bit more time and you could you could strategically place these release dates so that you know gamers have a have a chance to really partake in what you're putting out. Because I mean, a lot of these games. Hey, I got a, I got a pretty decent back catalog. I tell you that right now. Check and, don't you know, get me started. Yeah, man. I'm fighting my backlog right now. Hey, Kobe, yeah, so, are you a are you a developer? Yeah, but not for anything game related. Could you could you tell me is there a reason why these games don't come out during summer? Because that's a perfect time when all the the nerds are home playing video games. You know what I mean? So why don't they drop <sighs> games during the summer? There has to be a financial reason behind that. Uh, I that. yeah, I think it's a more financial answer for something like that. I do development. I, it's nothing game related, so I don't want to claim any knowledge of that. Yeah. But. Um, I, I don't know. I, There's got to be a financial reason behind that, like a marketing reason. Maybe I don't know. It yeah. just it doesn't make I, sense. I think, I think one of the biggest issues with that is that um, if you really look at the gaming industry, their marketing season is is Q3. Oh, is. Yeah. yeah. It, no, no, I'm talking about no E3, Gamescom. It all takes place in the summertime. So I yeah. think I think I think that part of the industry is yeah, that this is true. our this is this is our marketing season, not our. Our releasing season. Good so point. I, I, 
So I think that's part of the big thing that drives it. Um, it it's, it's just good the fact point. that that's a good you, know, you got Tokyo Game Show coming up in a couple it's weeks. Coming up. Yep. Yeah. So yep. Um, X, uh, they're, they're not they're not focused Xbox on Xbox shows right coming right up as well. Games. Yeah. Coming. So. Hey, but yeah. let, 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 let me give the last point to to Nubs here. What, what's your take on all this whole thing with Naughty Dog, man? Um, I don't, I don't think it's right to be honest. Like, you know, like you hear horror stories, like you know, I gotta skip holidays and shit, with my kids, or like you know, I, I'm stuck, you know, not being home with my kids. Like, for one, that really kills your morale in your office. Like, things like that are really bad practice. Like work life balance is so important to the mental health of your employees and you know, mm-hmm. just to the health of your business for real for real. But these big corporations they kinda look past that. And it's it's not even that, you know, that it gets swept under the rug. Like we know it happens. We as gamers, we we as gaming enthusiasts, we know that crunch happens. Like regardless of dev, we, we know it's going down somewhere. And I, 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 I don't I don't agree that people, you know, or I guess I'm disappointed that people aren't giving um, Naughty Dog as much shit as they've given, you know. You know um, why? Take two and shit. Like, like just, just like what they, they they're doing the same shit. So why aren't they? I mean, dude, you can't you, know, you can't talk about you can't talk about God Naughty Dog. You know what I mean? They're yeah, I mean, God, it doesn't kings and saviors. That's but that's why. part of <laughs> why it's still okay because like I mean, if you're loved. Nobody like you know you can release a story like this and you know your your rabid fans are just gonna be like yeah I don't care, but when you, shout the to Christopher Hate, Naughty Dog's not at fault. Like Two K only took only took flack because it's like or Take Two only took uh, flack because they're fucking huge. You know what I'm saying? Like no nobody no no like everybody hates you when you're you know when you're on top. You know, fucking. Well, I mean, what what else do you expect? I mean, it makes sense. Why would you go after a small studio? You're gonna go after a big studio when they're the because one Naughty Dog is a good. And- is a big and good and well liked studio. Like they need to be held accountable if they're they're doing shitty business practices to their employees. They they should. Yeah, but be. I feel like, but I feel like before GTA Online, if, uh, Rockstar if, if, and thing is, if you're, was like, you're not gonna call them out studio. for their shit, then you have no no business or reason calling any other company out for that shit because you you're 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 fucking you're privy to it. You, you know you you. Yeah. you, you I agree with you. I agree with you. Call out everything, but when you. Either call out everything or call or out. Don't, don't bother opening your fucking mouth about it. Like, at least that that's my take on the shit. Like, I, I think any, anytime it happens, it needs to be called out until it stops happening. I'd rather a game get fucking delayed than, you know, homeboy can't fucking, you know, see his wife and he ends up going through a fucking divorce because of his goddamn job. Like, nobody wants to see that shit. All right, man. Let's 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 move on to to versus. We're running a little bit behind, so we're gonna go over. And again, Christopher, shout out to Christopher Hart, Dave, man. He's a he's an avid Naughty Dog defender. They do no wrong. They're not to blame for anything. They, I guess, they don't do crunch. I mean, all right, like that's point point made, I guess. Anyway, let's get into versus. This week's versus is gonna be. I want to change it up, man. We just talked about it earlier. Uh, we're gonna be talking about third. I guess. Uh, Action RPGs versus tactical RPGs, man. Turn based. So we're gonna talk about those two differences because we had a little discussion in the beginning, and uh, I'm gonna have to flip heads or tails to who's going here and who lost last time. Oh, it's zero. You call it, man. Heads or tails? Uh, tails. All right, looking it up now. It's heads. So that means Pharaoh gets to pick. Pick the topic. And I guess zero would go first, right? So Farrell, pick pick the top, man. What you want? What do you want? The, the action RPG or tactical RPGs or turn base? I guess I guess they're kind of the same thing. Uh, one versus the other, tactical versus action. Hmm. You know, I'm action. I'm gonna go. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with you pick with the title, the but. Yeah. I'm gonna stick to class. I'm gonna stick with classic turn base. I don't know. Ew. All right. Turn- so you pick you <laughs> pick turn base. That means Reggie gets action RPG. Reggie, you pick the team though. Um. I gotta cut Pharaoh off, so I'll take Kofi. <laughs> take the take the RPG RPG source. Uh, just because I, I think he liked. Give me Dante, who just left. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> he must have heard yeah. you. No, no he's, Sorry. he's back. Yeah, what? Jimmy no, Dante. I was... Oh, wow. If I pick me, I feel privileged. <laughs> I didn't pick you. Are you guys oh. representing the tactical RPG side? Uh, no, no, RPG. he's the action RPG side. Wait, so Zero picked me again? Uh, yeah, he should have picked me. Uh, I didn't get a chance to pick. I, I, this thing's fucked up. <laughs> no, right. you, you, you win the toss. You get to pick the topic, but he gets to pick his so, team. All so right. we, we're just talking. We're just talking about it. We're just talking about what's, which, which one's better. We're gonna, we're gonna That's take it. turns. Yeah, which one's which one's better? You, is it is it tactical RPGs or turn based <laughs> RPGs versus action RPGs? And who? All and right. Go ahead, Zero. You, you, you were Pharaoh's team, I think. Who's who's Pharaoh so, actually? So so the teams. I'm gonna say the teams now. Bizarre it's, it's, thousand. It's Bizarre slash Pharaoh, uh, Nubs and. Uh, Mob versus Zero, Kofi, and Dante, and this is for the I guess the crown because right now Zero's winning two v one to Pharaoh. So if Zero wins this, then he wins a month, and he's the new versus champ. So let's let's get let's get into this. Uh, who goes first? Uh, I'm on turn. Right? Yeah, yeah, Let me no, go yeah. First. No, no, you're not turn. Da- Dante, you were, you with Zero? Your action. Okay, cool. Yeah, Zero can go first. Uh, Zero's team go first. Mob, right. you know what side you're on, right? You gotta put a clock on on Zero. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm I'm about to I'm about to set a timer anyway. You guys have you guys have two minutes. Listen, you guys have two minutes each to uh to go. Just I figure like it's fair, more than enough time. Um, and then I want I want the captains to go last actually. So that means uh who's on? So Dante, you go first. All right, so as far as action RPGs and how they actually are better than turn-based, well, first of all, you just got to look at the fact that turn-based, when you when you play a turn-based RPG, you have all of the fucking time in the world. Unless they throw an arbitrary fucking time limit on you, you have all the time in the world to figure out if you're able to win the fight, if you're able, to, if you've got the right equipment for the fight, if you've got the right strategy for the fight. You can basically just take all the goddamn time in the world. Well, at least with action RPGs, you've got to premeditate those fights. And if you if you can't premeditate those fights, you've got to be quick on the fucking draw to be able to win those fights. Like let's take let's take best example to take with this is the old and new fucking Final Fantasy VII. So we look at the old Final Fantasy VII when it comes to turn based RPGs. In that game. You could you could mix and match your fucking team. You could do all of that shit, but in the in the heat of the moment, you got all the time in the fucking world to to know if you've won that fight. That's the biggest goddamn problem. Where in the new one, it's all it's all real time. You've you've got to adapt. You got to survive at the fucking beat of the game's drum to and just claw and scratch your way to survive in a goddamn in a fucking RPG like that. And that, to me, is where the game succeeds, and why, uh, and why turn-based just doesn't work nowadays, and really kind of doesn't work at all, because it's just good to be able to fight and survive in real time, to where you know you you did everything correctly, you, and there's no there's no real saves coming at all with that, because like I said, it's all heat the moment you either fail or you succeed. Were like I said, with turn based RPGs, you got all the time in the world to know if you're gonna fail or succeed at that shit. Fair enough, man. That's just in time. You have twenty seconds left. All right, man. Very very good debate right there, man. Let's let's go to Captain Farrell's team, Mo uh Mod. What the fuck his name is Mod? I don't I don't even know your name. Oh shit, yeah, I Mod. didn't even realize you were playing Final Fantasy Seven. Shit. Yeah. I went looking at the stream. <laughs> Mob man, it's your turn to go, man. Why is tactical RPGs better than action RPGs? Yeah, two minutes. Look, man, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I want to be on the action side because I have more experience with that. But for, I ain't the, lost. for the discuss but for the discussion. Um, I think one thing he said about it, tactical being longer, you have more time to think about things. A lot of people prefer that. They think it's more fair. They'll prefer to think about things than for it to just happen all of a sudden and think of, the nostalgia is there. A lot of people just think when I think of RPGs, you think of tactical RPGs. Sorry for the background noise, some fucking... See, the police are coming um, for your betrayal. <laughs> man, I hear that shit every day in Compton, man. But... Hold on, let that shit pass by. Alright, let, let, let me pause the timer. 
all right, all right, all right. That shit passed. That shit passed. Right, no, passed. no, no, don't, don't start it again. That's all that we had to say. Then yeah, Nostalgia Factor, I think people think of RPGs. They think of uh, tactical RPGs, especially in Japan. Asia loves ta- the tactical-based RPGs. When they made Final Fantasy XV uh, action, an action RPG, people were mad. They hated it. They were furious, man. And um, But that game, I think that game still sold pretty well. And Son of Fire, that game, did, I think, even did better than Final Fantasy XV. And that game's a turn-based game. So, I mean, True. I think even though your, I think your stance is action RPGs are better, but I think when the majority of RPG fans, I think, prefer tactical RPGs, I don't know, man. I feel like tactical RPGs are better. Okay, you got 36. Sense. All right. That's Fair it. enough. Yeah. Fair enough, man. Not not bad for someone who doesn't have much knowledge in, in tactical RPGs, but I, you know, I digress. Yeah. And let's go back to Reggie's team, and that would be... Oh man, this might be a killer blow. Kofi, why is action RPGs better than tactical? Let's talk a little bit about Final Fantasy VII because it's being remade and no it's not only a turn-based RPG and turning action. A lot of Japanese developers that have influenced the industry for the last 20 years originally wanted their game to be live action but did not have the software to execute it the way that we see Final Fantasy XV and many games like today. So you have to kind of see where was the goal when we looked at these original games? Did we really want an active time bar that you'd make decisions when the time comes up? It's a cool mechanic that has been popularized now. But really, it was to have the freedom to do an attack whenever you wanted to, to maybe slow down time enough to make critical decisions, but to experience it in real time like we see everyday life. Because this is the role we play. When we look at things that came from the PlayStation 1 era. All of those games are chasing real time. And when we finally see it, those games are rewarded because of the new audience that they get to market to, right? We see uh, Shin Sakura Wars that comes out later next year, and it's going to be the first game that goes real time. So what what is the trend that we're seeing now? Each and every Mm -hmm. franchise that becomes improved goes real time. And they bring something unique that a larger audience has enjoyed. So now, more and more people are interested in shipping Sakota Wars just because they're willing to take that risk. So I personally that's support a, that's that a good motion. Point. A and lot of it. Yeah, I think it, it's going to be... No, you're good. It's going to be a uh, a huge step forward for everybody to see the advantages of, of real time. And I'll leave it at that. Dang, you finished yet a minute left, but <laughs> all right. Very well, man, that think. was Man, that was a good point. <laughs> I didn't think about that. A lot of these uh, series are going action based. Hey, they're all. You know, you, you, right? You're helping that's, out that's the other. Uh, you're not supposed to say that's a you're good point. Really the other team. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> my bad. It's, be- it's because. <laughs> I'm the wrong team. team, man. What's up with the well, Sony traitor, guys, man? man. I'm a traitor, man. I'm a Sony traitor. guys are always together. I always get the traitors. Facts, <laughs> I'm like, so what do you true. do? Um, All, every Sony guy we got on here, they sabotage the versus mode, man. Anyway. FC, FC, you need to find that fucking Star Wars traitor gif just so you can have it on. Yes, like this. yes. I definitely I need to get that, man. Oh, Damn. But he's not He's not really helping the point. He just... Okay. You see the validity in in Kofi's point, but yeah. I mean, yeah. All right, well, let's let's go to Nubs to to, to close, uh, you know, to to counteract Kofi's point. Go ahead, Nubs. All right. Um, I like to look at look at this as thinking quickly versus thinking deeply. Like, not everybody really like some some people get anxiety for having to make you know decisions on the spot. Like it. it Depending on what, what you're playing, that's a lot of pressure. I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't really rock with Fortnite as much, just because it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, you know, it's, it's Twitch-based. It's Reflex-based. It's a lot of... Not, I wouldn't even call skill. Like, if your Reflex is just better than somebody, there's nothing really you can do to, to combat that. But um, I, I believe, like, turn-based is the better of the two, simply because it's more, it's more accessible. You know, you, you have somebody that, are, say, you know, I'm disabled. You know, I, I don't have the reaction time that I need to really play, you know, um, an action RPG there. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, n- just never going to be able to get into it. Versus could you, like, could, you ex- could you explain in which way you're disabled? Like, is it like... 
Reaction times are slower. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, say, like, say, 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 I got fucked up hands. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, say, you know, only like three, 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 two or three fucking fingers on each hand work. I can't fucking play an action RPG game. That's, that's a good point. Actually. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good point. You know, it's it's completely out of the question unless I have some really expensive, specially made controller or some shit. But even then, um, I might not have the reaction speed to be able to keep up with what's going on in the game versus with a turn based like game. That. You, you, you play that at your own pace. So, but, you know, you, you can sit there, take your time to think out and, you know, move very methodically as far as what you're trying to accomplish. And I feel like that, that, that tends to be the more thinking-based game versus I, I look at action RPGs, like even Final Fantasy XV. That turned into a button masher for me. Um, you know, 10 hours in. Like, that's literally just spam this one button and that, that's pretty much the rest of the game. You don't get that, yeah, like... that know, was... That and was pretty lame. Fire Emblem and you know Final Fantasy Tactics, like it's it's a completely different game. It it, it actually brings strategy and it, it requires you to think to be successful. All right, man. The thing I don't see. like with tactical games though is that like there's too much text. I want to hear like a voice in the game. I feel like action RPGs have more voices in the game. Fire Emblem uh, is all voice. It's, it's fully voice acted. Go that's get good. it. Yeah, that's, that's what I want the game. That's what I want the game. That's, that's gonna be my. It's gonna be my second tactical game ever. I've only played Persona Five. Okay. Only turn-based game I played. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Let's yeah. let's, let's 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 get into the captains here, man. Uh, I think Reggie, it's your turn to defend why action RPGs is the better genre. Um, I think he, I think wow. he's. I'll start with uh, the idea or just the thought process. I think a lot when we talk about RPGs, particularly JRPGs, um, some of the classics is what people focus on. Um, and Kofi brought up a very good point in the sense that a lot of what the developers wanted to do was always make them action RPGs. Some of them got to do it. So you look at a game like Secret of Mana, mm. an action RPG, which is pretty much beloved and you know was made great acclaim. Um, let's jump forward in time where we've got games like Diablo, uh, which gives you that level of item resource management, which is just a bit slower than something like, mm. say, Dark Souls or uh, even World of Warcraft, but just enough so that you can actually run and sort of item manage. It gives you that sense of a tactical where you have to think about where I'm going next and what I'm doing with all of the high speed action. We jump forward in time again, and we have what sort of the largely critically acclaimed games that people have come because one of the benefits from action RPG is how they visually tell the story. A lot of old uh, tacticals relied on text, with, with the mm. exception of a few, like Fire Emblem, right. what we have now. But when you look at a game like The Witcher, um, or Dark Souls, or The Elder Scrolls, uh, or, our voices, yeah, um, or even Mass Effect, everything's visual now. And so seeing your team members die or seeing them react to certain things that's done or spending time with them feels much more interactive. It feels much more like a role playing game. Uh, taking the role of Commander Shepard uh, is, is what you are and what you feel you are. Or taking a role as a vault hunter in Borderlands, that's what you are and how you start to feel. And that's how things sort of evolve where you now actually and take the role of this person as opposed to in a lot of tactical RPGs for a lot of times, you're taking the role of someone else. Every Final Fantasy, you're basically taking the role of another character. But in a lot of action RPGs, you have the opportunity to actually be you in a sense. Let's look at Fable. You legitimately have your own life. Like it, it's, it's, you are Kofi or you are a Pharaoh and this is my life and I can grow and do whatever I want with it. Um, and, and But even the old games, that do put you in a position, old action RPG is one of the greatest of all time, Zelda. Mm. Or because it, it, you could do and go anywhere. The very first Zelda was beneficial because it was just an open map. Um, it is what Dark Souls was. If you didn't belong in this temple, you wouldn't know until you showed up. Um, and that level of interactivity is not really there in action RPGs. They walk you, I mean, in tactical RPGs, they walk you through the pace of where you need to go, which is fine. But if you're just here to explore and really just want to get out there and see what's out here in this world, an action RPG is where you want to go. Um, I mean, if you just look at what all about, the But what about Persona 5, though? That game's 
basically open world kind of. I mean, you go to all, all these right. different Test areas. Test the, the timer. City. Timer's up. Well, say, you should uh, get an extra five seconds for that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. fine. I, I did. And real quick, uh, I'm not, Ma, you got to let the guy speak. It's his, it's his turn to speak. Oh, man. you're he has, right. It's a, it's right. a timer. Right. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. He's sabotaging everybody. He's sabotaging I thought he was everybody. done. My bad. Nah, nah. You got to get the timer. All right. So lastly, Farrell, man, your, your last yeah. point to counter why turn base is better. I mean, and, and just to counter uh, Reggie's point real quick, Zero's point real quick, I've played plenty of tactical RPGs where you've gone into a spot in the map you're not supposed to be and you get your ass kicked. I mean, that, that happens everywhere. But um, I think tactical is just better just because it's more tried and true. Um, it's something that we've had for a long time. It's been developed and mastered. <laughs> I feel like now the, the action RPG is now kind of the – the fad and kind of the wave right now. And it's something where yes, developers want to to go there, but as far as like JRPGs, more so in Western RPGs, it's more prevalent, but as far as JRPGs, it's still in its infancy. So I think it has a lot of potential action RPGs, but it's just not something that's been mastered yet. Like we talked about Final Fantasy 15, for instance. I mean their battle system, yes, it was action, but it wasn't it wasn't flawless. It's not something that we. It, yeah, it wasn't one of the like, highlights of the of the game. So I think we're seeing that this action RPG, yes, is something that's developing, but it's not something that's quite there yet. So we look at the potential of it, and it excites us, but it doesn't compare to the depth of tactical quite yet. And I think that's what we're seeing. Oh dang! Short and sweet, huh? Yeah. All right, man. So uh, I think uh, my man uh, Dante, you got you got that straw poll uh, set up. There it is. Vote in the straw poll who you think did a better job, Team Reggie or Team Farrell, man, and that would decide who wins this month. Oh, in this case, Team Zero or Team Farrell. Did I say both of them? My, my bad. Team, team no, you, Farrell, you, you, team, team team Zero. you said Team Reggie, my, but I put Team Zero. My oh, only okay, request yeah, is yeah, that Zero. Zero sleeper cell does not show up today. Oh, no. last second. Oh, All right, let's do, <laughs> let's do an outro. Again, I apologize for being late and my mic. Being Barry White, it probably sounds like shit, but I, I don't no, know. Actually, you sound better now. You sound, yeah. That's crazy. We just, we just, we just didn't want to say anything because we wanted you to live in the false, uh, the false oh, life. The whole time I'm thinking that's why I wasn't trying to talk as much. I'm like, man. Anyway, so let's do an outro. Our special guest, man, first time appearance on Vitamin G Gaming. Uh, used to go by Sage Mo Lewis. Now it goes by, I don't even know what you go by now. Is it Mod or Mob? You're muted. You're muted, Mod. Hey, Mob, unmute yourself, bro, and do your outro where people can find you. My bad. My bad. Yeah, I go by Mob. Um, so, I'm, I'm going to do a, an intro or an outro? Yes, sir. <laughs> an outro? Yes. Where people can find you, my guy. Oh, all right. Yeah, I used to go by Sage Mud Luis, but that, that name was way too fucking long, and people didn't even say that. They just said Sage, right? So, I just switched my name to Mob because it was shorter. Good. You can find me on Twitter at Bob1776. Um, and that's pretty much it right now. I'll probably do YouTube later in the future if I want to get back into it. But yeah, that's it. All right, man. And then my guy Dante, what you been going? What you got going on this week, man? Where people can find you? Uh, what I got going on is actually tomorrow I begin my streaming of Fire Emblem Free Houses. On Wednesday I begin my streaming, and I on Wednesday I begin my streaming of Dead Space Free co-op new game plus pure survival so that's going to be pure hell of fun um and i'm currently doing uh, let's plays of wolfenstein youngblood and yakuza zero and and from this point onwards on the weekends i will be streaming my recording sessions live so you can see it first nice. at my twitch dante nice. crisis nice okay and my guy zero man where people can find you my dude uh just find me everywhere um you follow i don't know everywhere you follow your exes um twitter <laughs> facebook instagram uh always zero x nintendo switch um as always it's a pleasure to be on the show and always have fun fair enough man and my guy kofi where people can find you my dude what you got going on this week if anything guys you can follow me at creative underscore kofi on twitter i do translations for Mitsu guides or play PlayStation or Dengeki PlayStation guides. You can get uh, information out of Japan through my Twitter. Um, what am I doing this week? I'm playing a ton of backlog stuff, man. I just went through a, a run through of The Last Guardian 
Um, I just freaking love that game on my H- HDR TV. So that's been really good. But yeah, just more backlog stuff and getting ready for Trails of Cold Steel 3, which is <laughs> surprisingly turn-based, um, in mid-August. So Fair enough. And, and <laughs> shout out to the Money Spire guy. He said, you can find Zero in the grave since Pharaoh buried him. Damn. Oh, oh, oh shit! I just noticed that. I got the results, man. I'm just saying. All right, and now, man, do y'all true people can find you, my guy? Get you streaming? Do anything this week? Um, yes, I plan on streaming uh, at some point this weekend. Probably gonna be mostly Madden this week, but um, I'm, I'm gonna get past that oh little phase. There. You Don't you? Oh my me. God, me! <laughs> chomping on chicken wings. Dude, and I'm, I'm, I'm sauce. exactly, yo. Facts. I'm I'm literally Bro. chomping at the football season. How do you, you know, spend? How could you spend? How could you spend up? sixty bucks on that game, man? Like, because I like Madden. Same game. People got I, the preferences. I like All right, well, we gotta I get like out of here. But real quick though, Farrell, do your outro, my guy. What people can hey, find? It's you. your boy Farrell. You can find me on Twitter at Farrell Bazaar. You can find me on Xbox and PSN at Bazaar Five Thousand. Um, I'll be smashing uh Nubs tonight and Madden. I gotta see that. Yeah, you gotta link. You gotta oh, link that. that you gotta link that I'm about to pause. Um, I'm about to say yeah. pause. Yeah, yeah, and Madden, and Madden. I'll be, I'll be destroying his Cowboys, making Dak cry, making Zeke cry, making Nubs Oof. cry. There it is, man. That, that versus oh, real life boy. versus one v one. You know what? Oh. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a rock. I'm a rock the headset too, yo. You, you gonna hear this ass with me, yo? All right, and now the winner of versus for this month, man. Wait, what do it's, you mean this month? It's two two. It's, it's tied. Right. No, it's not tied. It's tied. Nah, he, yeah, it is. It yeah, is, it is tied because he didn't come for a week. Yeah. Uh, so we didn't go. We didn't go the full five. So we, we need a death match. match. Uh, we do need a death <laughs> match. Oh, you shit. You're right. Pharaoh came back. God damn it. All right. Well. Hey, Pharaoh takes do, but... no L's. We know. We already had this conversation. Are <laughs> you not both for Reggie? You guys are frauds, man. Oh. My guy Reggie. I feel bad, dude. Uh. So yeah. So. It's uh. Tied two two, so I don't even know how we're gonna do this. What's the death match? What is what's the death match, bro? We got we got to think of one, man. It? So right now it's two two two. Uh, Farrell came back after losing losing the first two, uh, so it's tied. And uh, we'll we'll think of a death match to see who actually wins this month, and then we'll go on from there, man. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. Shame you can't wa- shame you can't one v one in gears because I was gonna say gears five one v one open map. <laughs> Zero versus Pharaoh. It's gotta be like a off. like a fighting game or something or something you guys both play, and then we'll do it that way. And I'll record do, the shit. Do it on do it on Smash. I was about to say Smash. smash. Settle it in yeah. Smash. <laughs> Settle Settle it in something smash. like that. That'd be dope. As final that, de- final destination. There it is. Anyway, that's it, y'all. I appreciate you guys coming through. Smack that like button. Judo chop that like button. Subscribe. Share this to where you where you share things, and we'll catch you <laughs> the next one. Anyway, be easy. Peace. Peace. Thank you for watching and or listening to the Vitamin G Gaming Podcast. This is your host, FC Violent. If you like our content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave comments in the comment section below. If you want to find out more about Vitamin G Gaming Podcast, make sure you hit our website at pntsnetwork.com. It has all the information you need there. And remember, we are live every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and we'll see you next week. And remember, keep it gaming. Peace.